now, but I just wanted to say good morning. And we're going to be working on blankets today. So I'm going to get this up and running and situated. I just got in the shop. Don't even know if anyone's on here yet, so I'm probably talking to myself, but that's okay. Um, let me get on here. See if you can hear me. I can hear myself. Okay. Anyone here? Let's see. Besides myself. I haven't... I was printing all day yesterday, so I haven't been in here yet this week. So it's still a mess. So I'm just going to move a couple things around. And... Um, we're going to, I have a lot of blankets to do today, so we're going to do blankets. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my heat press so it's warmed up. Let me know if you're here and if you can hear me. Good morning, Joanne. I'm right here. I'm just turning on some stuff right here. Didn't really schedule this like usual, so nobody really knows that I'm on, but that's okay. Um, we also have a little shirt to make. It's the farmhouse shirt. I printed it yesterday, but I didn't get to press it. So we're gonna press it today. And it's this like little farm one. So it's gonna go on a little shirt. So cute. So let me know if you guys wanna see more of my printing process and printing videos and stuff too. I know this channel is mainly like sewing and stuff but of course i've evolved into a lot of other things so let me know what you guys are ever interested in seeing um i know when i was on my last live i was telling you guys that this table like ruins my nice shirts so i bought this stuff right here it's like silicone i'm gonna put it like along here i'm not gonna do that right now though because it's gotta focus it's focus day but how are you guys? Good morning, good morning. Let me find my wipes. I need to wipe my counter off. Here they are. Let me know if the sound is okay too. The speaker is always like random whether it wants to work or not. Hello, you can hear me perfect. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It is 9.10 where I live. What time is it for you guys? I just got in the shop. I just dropped my kids off at school, got my coffee, or made my coffee today. And then um, just came in here and printed out what I needed to do today and then got on live. So, not much of a preparation for a live, but you guys know I do that every time, so. When I decide to go live, I just do it, and I there's no prep, so here I am. I'm just cleaning off my workspace because I haven't done that in some time. I was printing all day yesterday. I have so many cute print, um, Christmas ones coming out. I printed myself a couple because I'm super excited that it's finally fall. Um, I love Halloween and fall season. It's my favorite, but Christmas is my favorite holiday. So I always really, really prepare for Christmas. It's just like my, everyone has their own like holiday season that they like or just holiday in general and mine's Christmas. So I go all out. My husband was making fun of me because I was just like, doing so many new designs and new everything for Christmas. I always go all out on it, so I love it. 11, 10, 12 in the morning. Good Lord. 12, 11 in New York. Everyone's from everywhere, and I love it because sometimes when you do lives, you feel like people just live where you live because that's where you live. But it's not true. Everyone's from everywhere around the world, and it's so awesome to see everyone that comes in on these lives from different different states, different countries, and all different times. 
You sound like you are not sick anymore. My daughter also will be sick. Must be going around here in Arizona. Yes, Joanne, I'm getting much better. The prednisone helped me. It's like a love hate with prednisone because it makes me feel yucky, like my stomach. It messes my stomach up. But it helped me breathe within the two days that I started taking it because my chest was really tight and I couldn't breathe. I have really bad asthma, so it really helped me, and it brought my voice back. So it's still kind of cracky, but it sounds pretty normal. So I'm, I'm back to normal. Yesterday, I finally felt like myself again. Natasha Wins look like she's from Great Britain. Yes, I know. I was looking at that, too. Mississippi. Good morning, everybody. Okay. So today I have some blankets to do. I have to embroider a name on these blankets. I've already set them out. So Hunter Michael is going on this one. These are the same exact blanket. And then Anthony Lee. So two blankets with double names. Um, so I'm going to do those. I'll put those on the machine. And then I have three lovey, well, actually one blanket and two loveys on this order. Uh, the loveys are back-to-back -back faux fur, so I'll show you guys how I do that. I know I've had some questions on how I make my back-to-back -back fur blankets, so I'll show you guys how I do those. And then I have just a regular minky blanket like this one, except it's my gray and blush floral one, so they're girls. None of these are personalized, so we'll probably get these on the machine, embroidering their names, and then we'll probably work on these because there's no names and it's just a cut and sew. And then this one also has a no name, so let me go pull that. This one is my Sonoran Cactus Blanket, so let me go see if I have one of those already pre-cut. I usually try to pre-cut all of my blanket fabrics when I get in, when I order new um, bulks of it. Does it look, I go through this one a lot, so I probably have to cut them out. I do, I have a whole thing of it right here. So we'll do that last probably because I have to prep it. So I'll put this over here for now. I don't know if you guys can see me very well. Do you want me to move the camera a different position? Hi, Angela, how are you? Sonia, Jennifer, Naomi, Joanne, Natasha, Nikitty, is it Nikki? I wanna say your name's right. Hey Amber, long time since I caught one of your lives. I know Mandy, I haven't been on live in, I feel like forever. I went on last week, and I think the week before, I'm not really sure. Um, but yes, lives are coming back. I'm starting to do videos again, back to the normal routine because kids are back in school. So it's been nice to kind of have like some normalcy around here. But of course I got sick last week, so. <laughs> That always takes a toll. Okay, we're going to, we'll probably, I'm gonna forewarn you guys, I'm probably gonna move you around today because I'm gonna be um, working at the computer because I need to put these names in. So I wanna show you guys how I do that. Um, and then cutting and stuff. So I'll probably be moving you guys back and forth. If that's okay, just close your eyes if you get nauseous. You guys know I like to move around a lot. Although I was doing a computer update, so let's see how far it is. I have about 15 minutes to go on my update, so change of plans. Let's start the ones that um, don't need names. So we'll set this right here to do in a little bit. Let's get these ones out. So I have the blush and the gray, so let me go get those. Actually. See if I have it underneath here. This is just extra backing for loveys. So let's see if I have, and I probably don't because I never get lucky <laughs> to have it in here. I have to cut it out. Ugh, get back in there. Okay, we have to cut it. So, Nikki. Good to know. Okay. So blush and gray. Here's my blush. And here's my gray. Okay. 
So I might actually, I'm gonna move you guys already. So actually gonna do something better. Sorry, sorry for the wobbles. I'm gonna go get my other tripod so it's easier. We'll use this one right here. That way I don't have to move the tripod, I can just move the phone whenever I need to. I'm sorry guys, I never prepare for a live. I just come in here and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go live. And then I have to move everything. So who knows how this is going to look, but we're going to try it. I don't want to push any buttons though. <laughs> okay. Tell me if that works. Happy Tuesday. It's a little bit better. Sorry, I know that's like a lot of moving. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna tell my husband I'm going live so he doesn't come in here and like just start talking. Okay, so this is my gray, and I like to keep it, um, why is it like that? That's weird. I don't use this gray anymore. I use a different gray. It's a little bit lighter, but this is the one that they chose in the listing, so I like to do what they chose, so we're going to use it. This one's just a little flimsy compared to the one I usually like. But with my minky blankets that are double fur, I like to double it. What is happening with this right here? Okay, that's why. There's a double backing underneath of here. I'm gonna flip it around this way. I just don't want to cut the underneath piece. I'm pretty sure this is going to work. So I'm just gonna cut this top layer off right here. To make it a minky double lovey. It's gonna get very messy. I don't like this one, it's too messy. So that's why I switched it. It's beautiful after it's done, but I don't like a big mess. So it's gonna get loud, sorry. I don't know how this speaker is with noise counseling. So tell me if it's too loud. Sorry. 
As always, ask questions if you need to. I just, um, I'm going to be doing this and working, but I'll get to questions too if you have any. And if you have like a specific question and I don't, just put my name in all caps. That way I, that way I see it. I think it light, highlights red if you do that so that I can really like see your question. Just get my attention somehow. Okay, so with these ones, I'm gonna do one at a time because they're messy. I simply just fold it over. I like to make sure the top layer is like a little bit shorter so I can see like when I'm sewing it because it moves around a lot. And I'm gonna go this way actually because this layer is a little bit shorter than the bottom layer. So I'm gonna just do that. Believe it or not, these ones are actually easier to sew up than my normal lovey blankets, and I'll tell you why. Are you both enjoying this beautiful weather we are having here in Phoenix at your office today just to be outside? It's so pretty right now, yes. Weather will only be getting better from here. Nights and mornings are so cool and wonderful. I know. I wanted to like work outside on the computer today, but I was like, no, I have to, um, I have to work. So I think this is the pen I use. I don't know. Anyway, okay, so this is how I do it. Let me move this out of the way so you guys can see. I basically just lay my template down on here and then I trace it. with my, this is the Cricut washable fabric pen. Make sure you're doing it on the wrong side, obviously. And I just trace it all the way around. And then when I go to sew it, I just put my needle in the middle position instead of all the way to the side, like I normally do with my levies. I put it on the middle position and then that's where I sew is the needle right through this line. Super easy. So after I do that, you can see my, I'm gonna go ahead and do this line a little bit darker because I can't really see it that well. I don't like to use a dark marker because you never know like if it's gonna come off or not. So I like this one, it's dark enough. Okay, now I can see it. Keep that there. And I like to use my clips for this. So I don't use my pins on back to back. It's just easier for me. So I just clip. clip like every, I don't know, inch, inch and a half, something like that. And then I have the tag is over here or the like part where you clip the ring. So I'm leaving my opening over here because I want to um, put my tag right here. So that's how I do that. And I just clip, clip, clip.
Okay, so that one's done. And we'll do the next one. This is my blush one. So let's see, this one's so pretty. I like to leave a little room up here for that tag part. Was that really loud when I put the vacuum on with this microphone? Just so I know. Have you or will you be doing more videos on the DTF? Yes. I just, I don't know if you were here because I, I just started talking when I got on, but I asked if anyone was interested in the DTF part of my business. So if you are, let me know and I can do more videos on that. Um, I'm really starting to get comfortable and confident in my machine that I have. As with everything, and you guys know with owning your own business, you have to learn it all every time you get a new piece of equipment. So the reason why I didn't do so many videos in the beginning was because I wasn't like super confident in it because I had never done it before. And I'm not going to teach something that I don't feel confident about. But I put a new video out on it the other day, just kind of like a how I start up everything and whatever. I don't know if you missed that video, but I posted it like last week. Um, but yes, I will be doing more DTF videos. I love the process. I believe in the process and yeah. So if you're interested, let me know what you would want to see, what you guys want to learn, or if you just want to see me do it, like, just let me know. Cause I need to know. I just uploaded just to my computer. I haven't listed anything yet because I'm behind from being sick all week last week. Um, but I did a bunch of Christmas designs and I'm so excited to release them. They are so cute. I'm just so excited for Christmas. I love it. This is a cute mini vac, which seems to get the job done. Yes, this is a mighty but tiny vacuum. I've had it for the sound is not bad. Okay, good. So this must be a noise counseling. Um, I got it on Amazon and I've had it since I stopped doing lives a while ago. And it is like, I, I told you, it's like a mini Dyson. It's so powerful. Um, it's called the Breegee. I think I have it linked below. I'm not really sure. I haven't even, because I haven't gone live in forever. I haven't even really looked at my description box, to be honest with you. Um, so let me know if there's missing stuff, if you guys see something I'm using and I don't have it, let me know. Because I have links to everything. So this one, you can see this color a lot better on. It's just the other one was, you know, the gray was a little darker. But this pen, I love using this Cricut pen because you can see the lines really, really good on here. And it doesn't have to be like perfect because it's in the inside. 
Nobody's going to see it. It got really quiet in here because my air just turned off. Okay. But you can see that a lot better. And I just left a little gap opening right there. Um, yes, I am. I wasn't here at the part. I would love some videos on the software. I want to get one, but that's one of the things I'm scared of. I just ordered some custom prints recently. Don't be scared. I was scared too. And I'm always scared when I get new products uh, or new machines. I'm actually scared of my, I'm nervous. I wouldn't say scared. I'm just nervous to learn a whole new thing. I was telling my husband yesterday, every time I do this, I order something new and then I'm nervous because it takes me forever to learn the one thing I get. And then I order something else and know I have to learn that too. Like, but it always happens at like the right time, I guess, because I just finished really fully understanding my DTF printer. And so I feel really confident in it. And now I'm moving on to my laser machine that I told you guys I'm getting on my last live. So now I'm gonna have to learn that thing, but it's good because it's just like one thing at a time. So don't be scared. You just have to do it and get your hands in it. And then the only way to find out like how to use it or fix it or make mistakes is to make the mistake and be able to do it. So. But yes, I can do, I can show you guys how I use it. And again, I'm not a professional, so I just can show you how I do it and what works for me. But I haven't had like major issues, so it's been good. Um, but yeah, for uh, Cheryl from New York. Yes, on DTF, thanks for sharing. I'm sorry, I'm like moving the table. My, I have one of those like gooseneck ones that's like holding my phone, so it's shaking. Um, let's see, I'm open to anything really. Everything is interesting and motivating. I, I think so too, Sonia. I just love everything. I'm a crafter at heart and I just think everything is so much fun. Where do you get your beautiful minky fabric? So this fabric, especially this one right here, specifically was from, from fabric.com, but they went out of business. So I have a um, like business license with Shannon Fabrics. So you, anybody can do it as long as you have a license um, to sell and stuff. But you have to set up an account with them and you have to have a minimum minimum order the first time you purchase. But then after that, you can order as much as you want. You just have to order at least every six months. So uh, I think your first order has to be like 50 yards or something like that. Um, so just be aware of that. But it is the most beautiful minky fabric. Um, this is the faux fur. This is the Minky Lux, and I love it. It's my favorite. I've used it from the very beginning. I feel like I'm talking really fast. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm trying out a new one over here, which is also like in the Minky department, but I don't even know what the name of it's called. I think I showed it to you guys before. I haven't released it yet, but this is my new one that I'm doing. I wanted to release it for Christmas, but I'm not there yet. But this is like almost like a weighted blanket. It is so beautiful. I made it the regular size as my um, other baby blankets. And it's just so bouncy. So I have this mauve color that I'm releasing. And I have this teal green color over here that I'm releasing. And then like a kind of like grayish color. I don't know. I can show you guys after I pin this. I don't want to mess this one up. But you can see it is like super bouncy. It's almost like a weighted blanket. It's so, so comfortable. Like, I'm going to make myself one. <laughs> but Shannon Fabrics, to answer your question, is where I get all of my faux fur. And my uh, printed minky fabric, like the cactus one, the forest bear, the actual, like, minky, I get from Spoonflower. I get all of my stuff from Spoonflower. Vacuum is listed. Perfect. Does the DTF you have print white that can be printed on 100% dark polyester as well? Yes. So DTF you can print on pretty much anything. Um, I haven't found anything that it can't really print on. I haven't tried printing it on like tumblers or anything. I know I've seen people do it, but I haven't personally tried it. But you're supposed to be able to be able to print it on anything. I wanted to make myself some customized shipping boxes with my label. Haven't tried that yet, but I do know I've seen that it works. Um, but yes, I my printer prints white, and it's really, really white. Um, I can show you. I have a print, actually. Let me show you. This is more of kind of a distressed look, but you can still see that the white is, like, white on there. And it's going to go on a white shirt, too. 
but you can see it prints white. And then the back of it is pretty white. And then I have this other one that I can show you that I haven't packaged up yet. It's my most popular one right now. Um, I just finished printing it last night. It's the, this is a big one. This is the no diggity one that is super popular, but you can see the ghost on here is white. Um, let me see if I put it on the back of this. So if it goes on a white shirt, you'll be able to like, really, I don't know how the picture is coming up on here, but it's like almost like tan back here and then white in here. So it prints really good white. Um, and then the back of it, it's hard to tell what the shot is, but you can see the back is like pretty white. Um, I love my printer. It was a learning curve for sure, but this one is a giant print. So I also wanted to, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be putting a sticker on all of my packages that I take out. I do put the directions on each of my prints that I do. This is just a really big one. Um, usually it's fully covered, but my paper's not big enough. I include this parchment paper in every single order. So if somebody that doesn't really craft doesn't have a Teflon sheet or parchment paper or anything like that in their home, they at least have this paper that I send it with. So that is just one of the things that I include in all of my prints because I just thought about it and I'm like, you have to protect it somehow. And if somebody orders prints and doesn't have that sort of material, I just like to put it in there for them so that they don't have to ruin their print that they get. But yes, to answer your question, it does print white, white. And those weren't perfect, perfect examples of super white because those were kind of vintagey looking. Yeah, so I was looking at the Glowforge, but I decided to go with a bigger one just because I'm gonna be making acrylics and offering acrylics and people have big sizes. So I think the one that I got goes up to um, the actual piece of material, whatever I'm using to fit inside the machine that I'm getting is actually bigger than this right here. So I think it's 37, whoops, 37 inches or 36 and a half. Um, long or wide. I don't know how, to, <laughs> I always get confused on that. So however long it is. So the width, I think it said it was like 28. So this is 24. So I think it's going to be like up to here. It's going to be big so I can fit anything in there. And then I got the, the bigger powered ones so that I can cut thicker material. So I think it can cut up to one inches thick. I'm not going to be doing an acrylics that big. Obviously, I'm probably going to do like an eighth or a fourth acrylics. But if I wanted to do signs or anything like that later on, I can do that. First order is 50 yards. I'm waiting on my first order. I want a little over 50. They have so many beautiful minkies. My gosh, Bev, you're going to love it. Is this the first time? Yeah, you said first order. Mal Queens here in Arizona does carry Shannon and they do online too. I've actually never been to Mal Queens and I've always wanted to go. Mole Queens, how do you say that? Thank you for explaining the DTF printing. Of course. Okay, let's get to this. So, yes, I have been very into my printing. Obviously, I'm sure you guys can tell. So today I'm in here. Yesterday, the whole day I was in the printing room. Um... I had so many prints to get out because of obviously holiday season coming up. People didn't, you know, people are just ordering the holiday stuff. So it's been busy. So I have to do, I have to divide my time and figure out when I'm going to be printing and when I'm going to be doing this. Um, printing orders are like three days of, sh you know, like business days for me to get it out. So... It would be sooner if I had a bigger printer, but my printer isn't super fast. So it takes me a little bit longer than the bigger companies that have the bigger machines. Um, but they're the same quality and eventually I'll get a bigger printer. But right now this one works for me and I'm, I just ordered a laser. So I got to 
You gotta simmer down for a little bit. But it is very fun. It's very fun to create. Even, even though it's the same thing with sewing, like you sew the same thing, but every time you use a different print or a different fabric, it's exciting, it's different. Same thing with prints. I can print all day and if I do different designs, it's exciting to see what they turn out like. It's so fun. I don't know, I'm, I tell my husband all the time I'm a nerd. <laughs> I'm like, I am a crafting nerd because I just love all of it. I, I get bored with one thing and I have to do something else. And then I get bored with that and I have to do something else. So my channel will always be sewing and clothing and all of that. But every now and then I'm going to throw in a little mixture of other stuff too. So it's fun. Hold on. Let's see. Okay. I told my husband that I was doing a live and he was like, okay, have fun. He's so like supportive. All right. So I'm gonna see how this, actually, because this is already in position, I'm just going to move you guys back over. Sorry, sorry, sorry to here. A little bit easier that way. That way I can just kind of put you guys over here. Where I'm sewing. This is my blanket machine. I'm sure you guys all know. Um, we're gonna start with this gray one. It's always, it saves the last setting on here. So I just hit okay and it's on there, but I'm going to change my needle position because every time I do a lovey or a blanket, I sew it all the way to the right. Um, but with this one, when I do back to back fur, I sew it in the center position. So I'm gonna have to move my needle position. Just move this over here so I have it. And let's go ahead and get you guys up here. Can you see that okay? Okay. So I get this in here first. I like to start like down on the corner. Take these out. I'm gonna put them in here so they don't get everywhere. Okay, so then when I go to change this, I'm just gonna go to here, and this is where like all my settings are. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but my needle is at 8.0. I'm gonna move it to four and a half because that's my center position on my machine. I'm just gonna hit okay. Now I'm just gonna go. So the reason why I like sewing these more is because it's just, I feel like they're easy. Like I just have to follow a line and nothing moves. Um, and the reason why I do leave a little extra on the sides, if you're wondering, there's like an inch, maybe a little more than an inch, is so that I don't have to like, if this hits one of my clips, it'll knock it out of place. So I just don't like to deal with it. And I just like to, to go. So just sewing down the line. Twist it. And if you're wondering, I do always use white thread. I never change my thread out. The only time I will ever change my thread out from white is if I'm doing like um, when I used to do like bandana bibs or, you know, when I do my scrunchies or my headbands and stuff like that, like little accessories that you can see the color. Other than that, I use white. it's probably really hard for you guys to see this but I'm just sewing on that line that I traced 
I do have to take this one out because it's going to get in the way. This is my top one. And then sew down. Comments, so let me see if I've missed anything. Do you have a shaker with your Prestige DTF printer? Um, I do not have a shaker, it's just the printer. Uh, like I said, when I first got the printer, I didn't even know that you could get like a whole combo thing, so I just bought a printer thinking it was just like a regular printer. And I learned the whole thing, and then I realized I should have bought the whole combo. But actually, in all reality, I'm really glad Everyone has their own opinion and their own take on it. But for me and my business, it's easier the way that I did it because I can't sit there and babysit it. And I've heard a lot with like the shaker and the curing system all in one. You kind of have to babysit it because if you just let it go and you don't have enough powder in there, then your prints are getting ruined. Or if the machine like the, didn't feed the film incorrectly, you have to redo it. So... Um, you still have some of those issues with the desktop version, but you basically, I, I put it in, print it, and then I move on to my next thing. When my printer wasn't here, I'd be able to print and sew at the same time. I just go back and forth and check, take out the print when it's done, put the powder on it and cure it. I have a system down, so it doesn't take me forever. Like yesterday, I printed off so many prints and got so many out, and I was in there all day, but it's like I'm on a routine, so I know like... I set all my prints in my software, I set them to print, I cut out the paper because I, I'm a money saver. So I bought, even though my machine doesn't take a roll feed for the film, I bought a roll and I just pre-cut my sheets because I noticed it's, it's around $100 to buy 100 sheets of film if you do it by the sheet. It was less than $200 for me to buy a gigantic roll of film and I just pre-cut my sheets as if they were sheets. It does take a little bit more time, but as I set my prints in my software and I know how big the print is that I need for each order, I just cut it to size. That way the next one's ready, the next one's ready. It's kind of preparing for embroidery. You hoop one, wait for the next, hoop another, wait for the next. So it's just like kind of in a line like that. So um, like I said, you just learn as you go. All right, next question. I'm here for a few minutes. My students went to lunch. Hi, Linda. Thanks for stopping in. I created my custom birthday design a while back, and I wanted to offer, but sublimation didn't look great, so I ordered one for my daughter's birthday and was amazed how cute the DTF looked. I'm in love. DTF is amazing. I can't, like, over-explain that. My husband says the same thing about me. He gets irritated when I'm not happy with something because I'm such a perfectionist. I hear ya. I think that so many of us crafters are perfectionists. Yes, yes, ma'am. Totally agree. He's always saying, babe, it looks fine. I'm <laughs> I know, right? What are the pieces of the DTF that you have? What do you mean pieces? I have, um, I heard, hold on, let me get back to that. I heard you have to use the machine every day. Is that true? That makes sense. Do you use hot or cold film? I use both hot and cold film. So let me explain that. Um, okay, so let me, hold on one second. Let me get my thoughts together. There's a lot, a lot of information on DTF. So I use cold film for like business tags. So like my, all my tags that I use for, um, my labels, if that makes sense. So like in my clothing items with my labels and everything, those are my cold film because, I just feel like they last longer. Um, I don't have, I have them in these bins. Let me show you. I'm gonna turn this around so I can give you guys a little thing. Okay, so 
in here, I keep, let's see if you can see this. In here, I keep all of my size tags, right? So whenever I go to make an outfit, I have my size tag. And these are cold film. So cold film, hot film, everyone has their own opinion on them. Again, just like everything else. But I feel like for these sorts of things, they're not covered. There's nothing in here. I did put like um, one of those like silicone pack things in there so that it keeps the moisture out. But I've had these in here since this was my very first project I printed with my DTF printer. And they've been in there since then. And they still are perfect. They are awesome. So those are cold film. Um, and so with that being said, I do use hot film. I use Insta film. I use cold warm peel. There's so many different ones that you can use and I've tried them all out. And the one I like the most is my newest one that I get from, um, DTF station, I believe it is, and I get their powder, and it's just the combination of the two together with my curing system that comes out like butter. So that's the ones that I've been printing out and sending out lately. Um, I had to change my instructions on it and everything because it um, is different for every film. So that's why sometimes it's a learning curve because I have to test everything out before I send it out, if that makes sense. So I use all of them to answer that question. Uh, the film, the films that I don't like to send out because I don't like them as much um, to send to customers, I use here in the shop. So like if I'm going, if somebody orders a physical shirt, I'll use my print or my film that I don't want to send out in the mail because um, some of them get like a little oiler, a li little more oily than other ones or they just like retain moisture more. So those ones I like to print and press right away here in the shop and they still work perfect. There's nothing wrong with them. They're not defective, but I don't want to send out something that isn't to my standards, if that makes sense. So um, all DTFs turn out good as long as you know how to use them and process them the right way. It's just some films are different than other films. So hopefully that answered your question, but I use all of them. The roll film that I got is an Instapill, but even with an Instapill, I still like, I'm gonna do a video on it because there's a certain way you're supposed to do it. Some people are scared when they get the prints that they're gonna press it. You have to use very firm pressure. Like sometimes my machine will say OL, which is like over limit, I think, um, or over your pressure limit. I go between eight and nine on there because you want it to be firm, firm, firm pressure. So if you're getting cracking or peeling after you wash it, it's all about the pressure of your print after you press it. So you wanna make sure you're doing on a really flat surface and having tons and tons of pressure. Um, and then the way that you peel it, so some people like to, like when you're doing vinyl, you'll peel from the bottom and go up or the top and down. So the correct way to do it is from the top corner and you just rip it off, you like a Band-Aid. You can't like be afraid of it because some people are like, oh, I don't know if it's stuck or not. Like, or you'll lift a corner up and notice that it still looks kind of wet, it's gonna come off. Well, and that's because you're doing it slow. You have to literally take the corner and like rip it off like a Band-Aid and it peels off like butter. So. I'm guilty of it. I was scared at first to do that because I was like, no, it's going to ruin. But I promise you it doesn't. You just have to do it. And then I think I missed another question on somebody asked what the part of the parts of the DTF are. So I have the printer and then I have the curing station or the curing oven so it's on my table it's just like a little oven that you put your prints in I got the 16 by 21 I believe it's the phoenix oven and then I have a powder station that I just it's in my other room and I keep it in my bathtub because I don't want the powder everywhere in there so it's contained and I just clean my bathtub out whenever I need to um, but I had, I did buy, it's just in a bucket right now. And so I bought an actual, it's called the powdering, what's it called? 
It's an actual powder station. I'll have to show you guys, but it was kind of pricey and I was like, oh, this is amazing. I'm going to use this and I'm going to love it. I actually don't like it as much as my ridiculous bucket that I use. Um, I feel like it wastes more powder because you have to pour the powder in each time. It's supposed to save it, but to me, I was like, I'm wasting this stuff and it's not cheap. So I went back to my bucket use and it just works so much better for me. You know, you come up with your own way of doing things and your own routine and I'm a creature of habit, so I hate changing what I know and I don't like it. So I just went back to what I knew and yeah, I like it. So those are the three pieces you need. You need your powder, your printer, and your curing oven or whatever you're gonna cure it with. These ones are a little closer to the edge. But I did it on this side where I can see the fur a little bit because if it was underneath here, I wouldn't be able to see like if I'm attacking it right. Cold film seems to last longer and it seems more durable. So the other thing with cold film is it does feel a little bit thicker or plasticier like vinyl, but it does, I feel like it's more vibrant, but it depends on like the kind of feel you want. So like the Instapill is a lot more soft, so it's more hand, better hand feel. Um, I like it better personally, and I don't have time to sit there and wait for all these cold peels, so I like the Insta Peel. I feel like the colors are just fine. I go with more of a vintage -y look anyway, so the colors are more muted. They're not super bright, so it doesn't really affect my designs. But yes, cold peel does have a more vibrant effect, but it does feel a lot, not as soft is what I'm saying. So I have the Prestige A3 DTF printer, vent, and oven. Yes, so I have the A3 Plus. They now recently came out with the Roll Plus and an R2, which I was considering the R2. Um, it's just got a dual head and it's a little bit faster. But I have the A3 Plus. I have the Phoenix oven that goes with it, the 16 by 20, I believe it is. And then I have um, just the powder that goes with it. And I have the ventilation system, sorry. Clever idea of keeping it in your bathtub. Yes, I, when I moved into the casita, I was like, I don't wanna put my powder on the floor because in here I have tile or like epoxy floor because it's my garage and I would vacuum it every day and clean it, which is fine. But in there it's carpet. We haven't got the floorings done in there yet. So I was like, I don't want all this powder in here. So anyway, I keep it in my, bathtub and at the end of the night I close it and you know it's in a it's in a bucket so it's not um it's not getting anywhere I close the bucket every night and you want to make sure you do that so that because your film needs to be like airtight your powder needs to be airtight the whole thing so you got to take care of it um it's like a baby but it's so worth it And you can like, pers it's just like embroidery, except it's not embroidery, but you can personalize it. So like this one that I printed, I have the option, this person didn't want a name on it, but this is just for a little girl shirt, but you can put their name underneath it as well. Like you can personalize it too. It's just like any other thing that you offer. So, and quite frankly, it's not easier because you still have to design it, put it in your software, crop it, do all the things, change, you know, make sure the colors are good and print it, which takes time. And then you have to powder and prep, powder it and cure it and then press it. Everything takes time. It's just like embroidery. You have to design it. You have to pick your colors. You have to hoop it. You have to put it on the machine, make sure it doesn't mess up. And then you have to put your um, tender touch or cloud cover, whatever you use on the back of it. It's just everything is a single process. 
So nothing is like easier than the other thing. It's just a different way of doing something. That is why I like to offer all the things because somebody might not like embroidery because it hurts their child's skin or itches them or whatever, but I can have the same design or something similar on a DTF that's just printed onto your shirt. The reason why I never went with sublimation, I do sublimation on like cups and stuff, um, but I haven't found the right t-shirt that I like for sublimation. I'm not about to sit there and search for hours and hours for that because I have all this other stuff too. So I just don't do a lot of sublimation shirts. But if you guys, I have certain colors. Like I don't want just white. I want like an ash color. I want like different stuff. And I know like, unless you guys know of a company that has like different color options for sublimation, I haven't found it. So I don't do sublimation for that sort of stuff. I love sublimation. I think it's the cool process, just like all the other processes, but I do it for like my cups and stuff. So right now I'm just trimming all the edges. I feel like I'm talking your ears off. Let's see. Where did I get my printer from? I got my printer from AA Print Supply, so two capital A's, and it's AA Print Supply Co. Um, they also, what I liked about it is they have a Slack channel. I mean, there's so many Facebook groups too that you can learn from um, or ask questions if you have questions and get answers that way and stuff but they have a slack channel and if you don't know what that is it's just like an app like a messaging app like whatsapp or whatever but um you have like people on there that can help you if you have a question like right away you just put it on there uh my let's say for instance my white was totally great on my first print and now it's like good halfway through and then it's fading halfway through like just certain things like that that you're like you need a quick answer for you can plug it in and they'll answer you so it's really helpful sorry for the noise Hi, Linda. Thank you for stopping by. My next major purchase will be a DTF printer. I am a cotton girl, so I use sublimation for non-apparel items. Yes, yeah, same here. <clears throat> yeah, I, I haven't used... Let me show you guys while we're talking about this. So these are the two shirts that I have that I'm going to be offering for women. So I have... Let's do... Let's show you one of each. So I have these ones. I also have sweaters. They're the ash sweaters, but I want I want one other color. This is my favorite shirt. This is my style that I like. So I'm like, I don't know, maybe if I like it, other people will like it too, but you never know. Cause I like more of a dolman style. So this is a white that I found that is not see-through. Um, you can wear all the other whites that I've gotten are super, super see-through, but I like the sleeve on it because I love a cap sleeve. And also, the bottom is kind of curved, if you can see that. So this is a t-shirt that I'm going to offer. It's kind of like a scoop neck. I really think it's cute. Um, and white goes with everything. But this is my ash. This is just the regular cam Bella and Canvas um, unisex tee. So this is the other option that I have. A lot of people love these just unisex ones. And it's in the ash color. So. I love the ash. So those are two shirts that um, I'll be offering along with sweaters, but I want to add one more color of sweatshirts. Okay. 
Okay. I do not top stitch these back to back blankets. Um, I feel like they're just so much prettier when they're not. But again, it's whatever you want to do. Um, I put my tag in and I just stitch up the tag part right there where it's like open right here. Um, and then they're done unless they have a name on them. If I embroider a name on these back to back blankets, I use my knockdown stitch because these are very fluffy. So the knockdown stitch works really, really good with this kind of material. But these are meant to be like super bouncy and fluffy when they're back to back like this. So I do not top stitch them. So basically, excuse me, I put my pin in here, flop it down with the ring, and that's the blanket. So this is the little piece right here that you put your cam snap on, and then you just snap it over like that, and then you have your little ring right there. So I'll, I gotta put my tag on that one. I like the white one for the cap sleeve and scooping up the curved bottom is a bonus. I know I love it. I just think it makes the t-shirt look um, just more stylish, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> what stitch length do you use on your blankets? I use, I think it's a, I think I use four. I like a longer stitch because, um, especially with this kind of material, it'll bunch up. Yeah, I use a 4.0. So my needle was on a four and a half for this one. Usually it's all the way over. Uh, 4.0 for the length, and then the tension is at a 2.0. So I bring my tension down. Make sure on these, if you do back to back, you're leaving like a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch off of your stitch because you do not want to cut your stitch on this. It will um, open up. Trust me, I've learned the hard way. So I always leave extra on the sides. Absolutely. Ask me anything. I'm an open book. For 99% of my stuff, I'm an open book. And I literally only leave like probably an inch and a half little opening right here, like enough just to get my little finger in there because I don't top stitch this blanket and I only stitch where the opening is, where I put my tag. And this is such soft material that it'll literally like fly through any little opening because it's so soft. And then I just take my little chopstick and do my corners. This was my very like favorite color from the beginning. I'm a very muted, like soft color palette person. Every now and then I'll throw in some darker tones just because I know other people 
like it too, but for the most part, I just do the soft colors. So this is this one. It's more of like a blush pink color. Same thing, I'll put the little thing right here and then it flips over. And then once you tack it down like that, the reason why I did that little corner tag like that is because after you do it, it just looks like a square. But then they have their little ring right there to play with. Okay, and grab a drink. Let's move you back over here and I'll show you how I do my tag. So my little hole is right here, but it's literally super tiny, you can see. And I keep my tags in this little thing over here. Pretty sure these are both for girls. So I still use these tags for my blankets. I don't use them for my clothing anymore because I use the DTF tag. Um, but I make sure I stick it in here. You can't really see. So I actually take my seam ripper and I kind of go in the hole and I move it all the way up to where I can feel the opening has stopped. And that's kind of where I know where I need to like start sewing the top stitch right there. So it's right there and I just go underneath. And because the blanket's so fluffy, you will not even see the stitch. I like to do double stitches right here because of the material. And it got my tag in there, but I wanna make sure it like got it good. So I'll just move over a little tiny bit and do like kind of like where the tag is. Cause like now I can feel it got the tag. And then I just cut my little strings off. And then I'll just go in here and like, fluff it up a little bit. And you can't even see where it got stitched. And there's a little tag right there. And sometimes I'll go like this just to make sure there's no opening and it's good to go. So that one's done. And we'll do the same thing to the other one. Little opening right there. I make it go all the way down. This one isn't as fluffy as the other one, so it doesn't really need like a double thing. I just like to make sure all the stuff is covered. You can pull it out of those stitches right there just a little bit. So you can't see it. And that's that. Okay, 
So those are done. And let's go this way. You can see my messy room. Don't know. Give me one second. I think my computer might be ready. I didn't update on it this morning, so it should be good to go. I wanted to make, um, let's see here. Let's let that do that. We're gonna go over here and I'm gonna just put my little things on the blanket so you can see what I'm talking about. Let me grab, my son pulled out a shirt yesterday cause he's like, mom, will you make me a Halloween shirt? He's so cute. So these are these are the wooden rings that I use for the loveys. So we're going to attach them to here. I'm reading your guys' comments. Let's see. I think I'm up to date. Okay. So for the gray lovey, I just obviously use gray. Use two, one, one. For the blush one, I have like this really light, light color. Can you guys see it okay? Yeah. Okay. So I just basically eyeball it. So I see like the peak right here. I go in between the two right here. So I just go like that. I like my flat head to be on the side that my name is on. I don't know why, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just me. <laughs> you can do it however you want. And then the next one, you can see the two pieces right here. I go in the center and then down about an inch and that's where I do that one. And then you put your thing in and there's your lovey. I don't know if you can see it. Super cute, super bouncy and fluffy. There's that one. Same thing. Make sure you go in the center of these right here. Push it through. Stick it up there. Press it really hard. You can't even see it because it's like basically the same color. And then you just take your ring, snap it in there, and there's the other one. So cute. I fold them differently. If this had a name embroidered on it, I would fold it like that and then fold it over because the name would show right here when it's packaging. But if they don't have a name, I flip it over and fold it this way. I don't know guys, I'm weird. Um, there's just certain ways I do certain things. So there's their two loveys and they still have another blanket that we need to make that goes with this order because she ordered three of them. But the other one's an actual blanket. So I'm gonna set these down. Sorry for the mess, my shop is a disaster. Let's see. <sighs> okay. Continue, I'm doing an update real quick. Continue, agree. Install. Okay. 
so this is what I am making for my daughter. I don't have this listed because I'm not really like a horror person. It doesn't really go with my business. But she wanted me, you can't really see it because let's see. Updates. Okay. Um, so I'm making a cup for her. I got my cup out. It's right here. This is what I'm making her. I got this little thing to measure it. So I'm making her a cup and she wants me to make her and her best friend one so that they can match. So she's into the whole scream thing. So we were going to do that later. Okay. We're good on that. I just ordered some Halloween DTF transfers from you. Your prices are very reasonable. Oh, thank you so much, Naomi. Uh, wait till I have my Christmas ones up. I already downloaded them all in my computer. I just need to list them, but they are the cutest Christmas transfers ever. Um, I actually have two other um, Halloween ones. I can take you guys to my other shop right now if you want a little live tour of it. I know I did a video on it, but I printed out a couple other Halloween ones for myself that I thought were cute, and I didn't know if it was too late to list them or not. And I printed out a couple Christmas ones. So we can walk over there if you guys want me to take you in there and let me know. Can you make our cup? Yes, I can definitely make our cup. I was actually... I'm trying to figure out how, if you want to design it for me while I'm live right now, Sarah, you can send it to me and then we can make it. Um, just go into Canva and do the dimensions. I can give them to you. If you have, you still have the PNG for the file, don't you? Okay, let's take a tour. Don't mind my messy garage. Just close your eyes. Um, I'm going to cover this really quick. <laughs> I'll take you on a little tour really quick. You can say hi to my husband. <laughs> hi. hi. <laughs> Taking them on a little tour. My house is a mess. Don't look at my house. <laughs> yeah, I, love you. I love you. Okay. Going on a tour. I have a package. Okay, so this is my casita where my printing office is now. It is connected to my house. That's my daughter's room, but it's on the outside of my house. So it's kind of connected in a way. The air is kind of loud in here. I gotta get it fixed, but this is my little room dark in here, so let me turn some lights on. Open some shades. I actually have windows in here, which is nice. This is a really real live, guys. This is like in the moment live. But let me know if my connection is still good or whatnot. I got these lights because it's dark in here. So there are these lights like this and they have, they're pretty good. Like they like lighten up the room a lot. So I got two of them. I'm probably gonna have to get another one for the other side. But this is my room. This is my setup for my printer. Um, my table that I use. I brought my vacuum in here because I needed a vacuum. This is my little like shipping area. I, Forgot to take my coffee cup in yesterday. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, Sarah, why I'm doing this, you should design that. Um, go in Canva and just look up 16 ounce tumbler wrap template and you should be able to size it like that. And then I can always resize it after it's designed. Can hear you just fine okay perfect okay so anyway this is my whole setup um i'm gonna set you down right here so that i can show you these like cute prints so this one i made for myself this is another halloween one that i did i don't know if you can see it perfect 
But I made this for me. I thought it was so, so cute. Let's see. I don't know if you can see it. But the colors are so cute. So that one I made myself. This is also the other Halloween one that I made myself. So if you guys want me to list these, let me know. They're so, so cute. This one I messed up myself. I scratched it on accident, but it's for me, so I don't really care. Um, but anytime this ever happens, I'll always remake it because I'm not going to send it out like that. But you can always tell on the back when they're scratched. You can see the white is scratched off right there. Um, it's not going to make a huge difference on my shirt. And again, it's mine, so I really don't care. But if you ever get a print that is scratched like that, it's... It's scratched. <laughs> um, here is kind of a fall one that I printed for myself as well. Uh, Radiate Positivity. Hopefully you guys can see these. Um, I thought that was super cute. It's like very like, I don't know, pastel, folly, light colors. And those little mushrooms are so cute. Here's a Christmas one that I made myself that I, this is like my favorite one. I love it so much. I don't know if you guys can see it. Here, let me go like this actually. Might be easier. Like that. Look at how cute that is. Whoa, what did I do? Um, so cute. I love that one. My little Santa Christmas. So my Christmas theme is kind of like the pinks and the reds and the really pretty greens. So, yeah. Um, and I guess what we can do, since we're in here, we might as well, let me show you guys. Let's see. These ones are already listed. Let me bring up my computer because I want to show you guys why we're on this live because I'm super excited about them. This is my program, so I'll bring you closer. So this is my setup for all of you that are wondering. I have my computer. It is a um, Windows. I think I just got it at Costco. Um, I have my printer in here, another one, because I don't want to go back and forth all the time, so I brought another one in here. This is my DTF printer that I have set up. This is the air filtration system. It's I got everything at, this is where I got my printer and everything. It's called American, All American Print Supply, AA Print Supply for short. And then I got the Phoenix 16 by 20 oven. So that's my curing station. And then when I said I put everything in my bathtub, this is how I have it. <laughs> so this is my, that's what it's called, the legit powder station. So you're, I got it because it was supposed to be better. You put your print on there and you put the powder in and then the powder like goes through those holes. It's hard to really tell. But down here, there's like a little thing down there where you can release the powder and then that's like a pouring cup. But I felt like I was just wasting a lot of powder and it just wasn't what I thought it was. And this thing was kind of expensive. So basically I use it as a table now to help my back from bending over all the way to the ground. Cause I don't want to keep this out there on a table cause it makes a mess. So I just keep all my powder in here. This bucket is big enough to fit my big transfers in. So I just shake it over that. And then at the end of the day, nobody will know it's even in there. So there's my little bathroom. Hi. <laughs> so let's go back over here for a second. I'm gonna show you guys, if you can see, I'm gonna, I'll enlarge my screen for you so you can see the designs a little bit better. Sorry, I'm like all over the place. Let's see. Audio is great. Okay, cool. Um, are you selling them on Etsy or do you have a website? Sorry, I don't remember. Mandy, I have both Etsy and my website. So every time I list something on my website, I go straight over and list it on Etsy. So most of the time I'll just list everything on my website first and I'll write it down on a pad of paper 
and then I'll go over and repeat the process on my Etsy. I haven't figured out how to sync them, and because I'm so far into it now, I don't want to, like, ruin anything. So I just, that's how I do it. Christmas print is cute. Thank you. I like to go to the website instead of Etsy whenever possible. Yes, Naomi, thank you. I put, in all of my Etsy orders, I put a, um, I put a, like, postcard in there that says, you know, to my website or whatever, because I'm trying to put everyone over to my website. But Etsy is just always going to be there anyway. I'm going to use your trick of bathtub because I can't stand powder that gets all over the place. Uh, yes, Naomi, it is the best. Okay, let me see if I can enlarge this for you guys so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Sarah, the you can just search template on Canva. Just search 16 ounce cup wrap. It's going to be really hard. I'm going to just hold my phone because I can't get the thing right. Okay. You guys are probably like super sick right now from moving. This is my program. So basically you pull this up. This is Digital Factory CAD link, basically that comes with my machine. So I'm gonna get out of here and I'm gonna show you guys all of my, Sarah, you can see all my designs in Canva, but I'm gonna show everybody them. So here are all the ones that I'm uploading. So I'm gonna go slow so you guys can see them. These are my Christmas designs. There's a few, like if you see them like this, like triangle, or I'm sorry, rectangle, those are cup designs that I'll be doing. So this one is so cute. The squares in the background are just because it's a transparent background. So pretend it's on a white shirt or a pink shirt or whatever you wanna put them on. So these are some of the designs that I have coming out. These are like motivational ones. I have like, that's a Valentine's one I thought was cute. So trying to get a head start on stuff. Let me click out of here. Um, okay, let's scroll up. I have so many. So these are all cup ones that I'm doing. Cup, 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 cup. Cup. Those are cups, those are, that's a 16 ounce and then a 20 ounce. Shirt, that's the Halloween one I just showed you. This cute little coffee daisy one. Um, just these cute little like Christmas ones. I'm kind of going fast, sorry. Um, that's the one I just showed you. That's the one I just showed you. This little Western Santa. Christmas trees, Santa's favorite. A lot of them are like boho-ish. There's another skeleton one with a, with a Santa hat and a candy cane. Christmas, Christmas, some coffee cups, Holly Jolly era, Mommy's Little Reindeer. And any of these can be personalized as well. If you guys want the design with like a name on it or anything like that, I can always do that too. Um, so these ones right here, the Mama's Little Reindeer with the pink uh, checkered underneath. The picture is a little bit bigger. It doesn't show the whole thing. There's a matching one for a boy too right here that is Mommy's Little Reindeer with the blue underneath. So there's matching boy and girl like for twins or whatever. Um, Santa Claus approved. I thought was super cute. First Christmas is so, so cute. That's a birthday one that I thought was cute, so I got it. Um, I love that, like, my first hot cocoa one, milk and cookies, uh, Merry Christmas, little pink deer, just a classic first Christmas, the blue first Christmas, classic red Santa, the Grinch. These three go together. You can either do it without a banner, with a ba name banner, or with the background, or just solid. Um, it's the most wonderful time of the year. These two Merry Christmas ones are the same, but a little different. Christmas, the Grinch, and that's it, Whoville. I'm fine, everything's fine. I thought that was super cute.
So yeah, those are my Christmas designs that I will be uploading. I worked so long on them last night to upload them into my computer. Now I just have to list them. So it's a long process, but I'm trying to get a head start. So look out for those. I'll be posting them on Instagram when I get those all listed and stuff. So there's a little tour of my room. I'm just gonna shut my lights off because I don't like to waste electricity. So we're gonna do that. And there's my little room. And then over there, actually on that wall is where I'm putting, I'm gonna be getting a bigger DTF printer to go in that corner. And then in this corner over here on the wall, I'm putting my laser printer that I'm getting in December. And then I'll have like a filtration system to go out that window right there. So that's the plan. Okay, we're walking back through my house. Don't look at my mess. My husband's working outside today because it's beautiful outside. Okay, back to work. <laughs> Sorry for the detour. Thought that was fun though. And I'm gonna set you guys down so you guys don't have to be going around anymore. Let me plug my phone in because it needs to be charged. Hopefully my video didn't cut out walking around. Back to action. Let's make this other blanket. Do you guys have any questions on all of that that I just shared? Going to use your trick for the bathtub. Yes, I read that one. No. Naomi, you totally should. I'm out of breath. <laughs> when ordering DTF prints from the place I got mine, it said to make sure images are saved at no less than 300 DPI. If they aren't, how can I do that? So bring them into what I do and I've never had an issue with this. Again, you guys know I'm the least techie person ever, so I don't know if this is right or not, but I've never had any issues. I bring my images, I download them to my computer and I bring them into Canva. And then in Canva, I like to save mine at um, like, I do it for my Shopify. So I save them at 2048 by 2048. And then that's just how I download them. I don't know if that's right or not, but my images always turn out really clear and really good. So that's just how I do it. Sarah, I don't know if you have any other pointers in that field, because I'm not a computer person. I just kind of learn as I go. But I just download them from whatever app. Like I usually get my, I usually get my designs from either Etsy all those ones I showed you are mostly, probably 95% of those are from Etsy. I like to support small shops. Um, and then like a handful of them were from Creative Fabrica. I pay for the Creative Fabrica um, yearly subscription. So they're all free for me to like download. But sometimes I find it hard to find what I like on there. So I mostly get a lot of stuff from Etsy. And I just download them from that and then they usually are pretty good. But I do look for good reputable companies with like good five stars and a lot of downloads and stuff. And I look at the reviews, I do. I'm a review person because I strive on customer service. So I want, I want good service back, you know? Okay, so we need the gray and blush floral one with a gray backing but neither one of those are cut out either because I already checked yesterday. So we're gonna have to start the process. I am a chatterbox today. I create my designs so with no less than 300 DPI, not sure how 
to up the DPI from an already existing file. Yeah, I mean, most people who actually design their files do do it the right way. So I wouldn't, I'm from like a reputable place that know what they're doing. So this is the blank. So this is the blanket we're going to be making, but I don't have any pre-cut, so we're going to cut the edges off and cut the blanket. Cut the blanket. So whenever I get new fabric in, this is what I do. I try to do it right away, but it's been crazy, so I haven't been able to cut everything over fall break which is next week already I can't believe that I'm going to be organizing this other half of my shop and this half of my shop I moved my printer into the other room obviously I just showed you that so now I have like all that to like kind of work with and I have an idea of what I want to do with some of that space over there so I'm going to be organizing because I just have stuff everywhere and I can't handle it. I can't concentrate <laughs> when I have stuff everywhere. I feel so bad because my son, this is a totally different subject, is losing all of his teeth right now and I really really wanted to make him a in the hoop um, tooth fairy thing I haven't had time so I had never told him so he wouldn't get his hopes up I just wanted to surprise him with it but I haven't had time to quite frankly I have only done ever like one in the hoop project so that would actually take me some time to like figure it out I don't have time for that so if any of you guys have a really easy in the hoop like tooth fairy thing that is easy let me know because Andrew is about to start losing teeth too and I really wanted to make them one if you want to I would love it But let me think of what like design, like, cause I know you can do like characters or like whatever on them, like different stuff. Cam's favorite is Spider-Man. So I don't know. Or like, if you just wanna do like a color palette, his favorite color is blue, but like, what kind of blue? It's like a, Uh, let's see if I have that color. It's like a pretty blue. Not like royal blue or anything like that. It's like this is his favorite color blue right here. Like a baby like teal blue or something. Like that's his like favorite color. And Andrew's favorite color is red. I need to take my trash out. I always say I'm gonna clear this table off because it's so big, but it, there's always stuff on it. Like all this stuff needs to be put away. So I have room. I do need that. I have to cut that out. These are like orders that need to be cut.
So I do offer custom blanket sizes, but only on request because whenever I get my fabric in, I pre-cut it to my blanket size. So I never have like a whole open reel of fabric for somebody to be like, I want a giant blanket. So if they do offer or request a big blanket, I usually have to order the fabric because I always do pre-cut my fabrics. So this is how I do it. And I just do it like this because this is the dimensions that uh, Spoonflower ships us the fabric. So I just go off of that. And it looks like to me, if I can tell, I only had to cut three edges off of this. So I must have used it for a lovey at one point and then didn't have time to like pre-cut the rest. So I can tell because my blankets are, I usually cut them at 36. No, I'm sorry. I usually cut them at, I move it all the way up here and I don't mess with the width is 27 but the length I cut at 36, so they end up being about a little over 35 inches long. Um, and then this one looks like it's a little bit short, so I must have used it for a lovey at some point. Let me just check. So if I cut it, yeah, this one's only 32 inches long. So what I'll end up doing with this blanket is actually I can use it for a blanket because this is a non-directional fabric. So I can turn it the other way and use it as a blanket or I can just use it for loveys. So whatever I decide to do. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this one. And I just cut it at 36 on the fold so that it cuts out two blankets at one time. And then I cut the fold right here in half. That way I have two blankets now. And I usually get more, I usually buy when I do my blanket fabric, I usually buy like uh, four to six yards of blanket fabric and to every, I just double it. So if I get four yards, I'll get eight blankets. So just think of it that way because I'm folding it in half. So each yard is doubled, if that makes sense. I don't know if we're going to be able to do the cup with a design. It would be a full printed design because you can't move the background. You can't remove the background, is that what you're saying? Why don't you just use elements from it? Like take the turtle out of it, take the whatever different elements out of it and just place them on there, like however scattered. That would be cute. Because it would be the same elements. You wouldn't think that this stuff sheds, but it actually does a lot, especially on the stretch. these away so they're not just sitting on my table. I also have so many minky bink, um, blanket fabrics that I 
have yet to list. So this one is a little bit wrinkly. So I am going to just lightly press this one really quick over back here. And yeah, let's move this over here and this over here. And while we are waiting on that, I'm gonna put you guys right here so we can press a shirt because I need to get moving on this stuff. So we're gonna go right here and I'm gonna show you, we're gonna make this, just this little shirt really quick, this one. So she ordered a 2T ruffle. So let me go grab that shirt. And so this is DTF, just so you guys know, this is DTF. So the first thing that I do is I get my shirt 2T. I like to, this is just how I do it guys. So you don't have to do this. She wanted 2T ruffle. I always grab, my dog is barking. Give me one second. Come on. Go get a drink. Thank you, Naomi. Have a good day. I will have to fiddle around with it a bit. I have to finish school with Tabby. No worries, Sarah. But yeah, watercolor is fine too. I do watercolor on mine all the time. So I don't know if this, yeah, this is gonna fit. So I always put my pillow in here just because I like a nice flat press. So I put it up to the collar right here and I always lay my ruffles down off of the press because I don't want them all ruined. So I pre-press my shirt. I have it on three different settings. They're all the same, 12 seconds. So I pre-press it and it's on high pressure. So you'll see it goes from like nine to OL, between eight, nine and OL. Um, high pressure is good. So I'm getting the moisture out of the shirt. DTF does not like moisture. So getting the moisture out. And next I'm going to take my lint roller because I don't want any lint on here. It did just come out of a bag, so it's probably fine, but still. There was a little bit of stuff on there. And then at this point, I just take my DTF and I just put it, I kind of make sure I have it like on straight. I usually, for kids, like to do like two feet, fingers down a little bit, not too much. I With this one, I line the top or like the peaks of the thing up with the armpits. And I just make sure it's nice and straight. And then I'm going to cover it with my Teflon sheet or the parchment paper that I include in my um, orders. Press it down for, again, 12 seconds. That's just my magical number. Every heat press is different, so you'll have your own settings. Um, it just all depends on, yeah, your settings. So with these, this is my like Instapill one. So I think I showed you guys this before. I just, it, you don't have to do this, but I do that. And then you literally just rip it off like a Band-Aid. There's nothing. When you press it right, there will be nothing on here. I haven't done anything to it. I just ripped it off and it is just perfectly on there. So now I'm going to do another press for again, 12 seconds, the same amount of time. I cover it again, but see how easy that is. It's just so easy. And now I have a shirt that's designed and it took me all of what, 36 seconds. Done, done, and there's the shirt. 
so, so cute. And like I said, uh, I offer personalization. So if they wanted to put their name underneath of it, they could put their name underneath of it however they want. But that shirt is done. I'm not going to fold it yet because I did just press it. So what I like to do is just set it down. Don't, don't get angry with me. Um, so I just take it. This is the order. I just set it down over at the shipping area. And at the end of the day, when I go to package everything, then I'll fold it. But I don't like to fold it right away because it's still hot. So I'm just going to go set this over here. But that's how quick it is to make a DTF shirt. And it's super, super cute. What is my printer doing? Or my computer? Let's see here. Do, do, do. All right. Do you guys have any questions for me? I know I'm talking a lot today. So while we're doing this, let me finish do this shirt really quick too. Um, going to keep moving you guys because apparently that's what I do so this is a custom shirt I've already done a bunch of them I just had to redo this one because the sizing was off it's for a company so this is a really large print um, basically like the whole sheet so this is going on the front of this shirt so what I'm gonna do is pre-press this is a giant 2xl shirt so I'm going to pre-press the shirt like I did the other one. And let that go. Can't really see if you guys are commenting. And then with this, because it is so big, what I like to do with these is take a little bit of extra time and I line up, I grab my neckline right here because it is so big. That's my center of my neckline. And then some shirts don't come with the side seams, so you can't really do it if they don't. But I like to line the side seams up, pull it tight like that, and that's my other center point. And then what I do is just do a really quick line. Nothing drastic, just something to where I can see it. Sometimes they aren't even, so you can't always go off of that. So then I open it up. And I look at it, and it actually looks really centered to me. So then I will I lay it down and look at it, and it looks great. So now I'm just going to put it back on here, and I'm going to go off of that center line that I did, which is right here. I can see it. So I'm just going to line my shoulders up on here, make sure it's like kind of even. Go like that. I like to, I cut, so I cut these certain ways. So I leave a certain amount. If you order these from me, you'll notice on every edge, there's the same amount of space along each edge. And I do that on purpose so that you guys can just fold it in half and it'll make like the perfect middle position. So I do that. It does take a little extra time, but I like to make things easy for you guys. So that's why I do that. So there's your center points. I do have this like guide, but I don't really like using it. I just use my fingers usually. I like to use my hand as a guide about how far down it goes. So where's my center line is right there. And then I can't really see where that is. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna cover it with my big one. Make sure it's going the right way because the shirt's upside down. So you gotta pay attention. And this is a big print, so same exact application though. Press it, I'm gonna probably just rub it for a real quick second and then rip it off. And just rip it off. Literally nothing on here left. Let me just press it for you really quick and then I'll take it off and show you. Super easy. It's literally the easiest process besides like, I mean, if you didn't have to weed vinyl, vinyl is so easy because you just rip it off too. But DTF is my, like, whatchamacallit, your spirit animal. <laughs> I just love it. So this is a giant 2XL shirt. I don't know if you can see it. But the colors, the gringe look or grungy look, super cool. And this is all done on my little desktop DTF machine. So good, and it feels good. It's not plasticky at all. It is in the shirt. It's almost, so with the combination of the powder and the transfers that I use, and just my setting, curing set, um, setup and all that, um, the hand feel on this is amazing. It does not feel plasticky. It's very soft, even with full cover, cover transfers it's not crunchy. So like vinyl, sometimes if it's too thick, it's real crunchy and you can feel it and stuff. Um, even my husband with his business, they have shirts that they got made, not from me, but a different company. And when he has a full cover, like circle on his shirt or whatever, I can like almost like feel it. And it just is like crunchy. I'm like, oh my gosh, I could, <laughs> let me just remake that for you. Cause it doesn't look comfortable. Um, but with this giant 13 by 19 print, it feels really good. So it all depends on the application. Okay, let's move on. But I got those out of the way, so now I don't have to worry about those. So let me put this over here. And that's done. And again, I'm not really gonna fold it up. I'm just gonna like fold it in half. I don't like to fold them right away because they, they can get a crease in them. So I, lay, I let them lay and cool for a little bit. And you're not supposed to wash them for like 48 hours after you make them, just so you know. Um, I don't ever say that when I send them out because obviously they're gonna be sitting for that long time because they're gonna be shipping and all that during transition. So by the time they get them, they're totally fine to wash. Um, but if you're personally making them, make sure you don't wash them right away. And of course, I have tested that process just to see what would happen if I made myself my own shirt and did that. Um, and it was fine. It didn't really like make a difference, but still, I'm not gonna tell people to do that. Okay, we're gonna press this. This doesn't have a name on it, so usually I press it after I embroider the name, but there's no name going on here. So I'm just gonna press it really fast. And I don't press it for very long because it is minky, but this is a very nice like steamer that just gets the wrinkles out really nicely. It doesn't bother the minky. I don't usually do it on this side, but I didn't want my back to you guys. You can see the difference. There's no wrinkles now. T 
take a break. My, I'm like out of breath from talking so much. <laughs> Apparently I had a lot to talk about today. I feel like it's been forever since I've actually like felt comfortable on here again. And this doesn't ruin the minky because you're really not supposed to heat minky, but this is just a light steamer, doesn't do anything to it. Um, and I do it on the back side, so never heat the front side of it. And it just makes it really, really pretty. So there's that. Now we can make the blanket. Normally I would be done already with this, but I've been chatting a lot. And that's okay. I'm pretty caught up, so we're good. Hey, Karen, how are you? I know, it's been forever. I'm moving around a lot today, so don't get sick. <laughs> okay, let me go grab, she wanted the gray backing, so let me go grab that. This is a different gray backing than the other one we used. So let's grab that one. That is where? Where did it go? This one? Or this one? Where did I put it? Oh, let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's not that. It's not that. I have so much fur over here, guys. I think it's packaged in here. It's black. It's pink. Pink, pink, pink. We use this one. All right. So I just lay it on top of here. And yes, I know there is a lot more extra on that side, but it's just the dimensions of the, of this fabric that you get. So I got like hair in my nose. Um, and I just cut it on the fold right here. I get loud I should probably empty this but look how pretty I love like when I don't know I'm weird but look at the like different colors in here when it like sucks all the fur up I think it's so pretty just empty that to get a new bag really quick. This one is starting to get too full.
always a cleaning process in here. I go through so much product and so much paper, film paper, everything. All my trashes are always full. Do you guys have that same problem? I Like I'll take this out and then I'll look down tomorrow morning and it'll be full again. set it right out here. Yes, I know. I forgot to turn you off. That thing's going to keep beeping. random work random work day I have a lot of blankets so we have this one to make and then we have that one to make I still have to put those on the machine but my computer isn't updating right probably because I'm not tending to it. it keeps asking me for my passcodes and all that stuff so that might be a later I have to do that later but that's okay they aren't due yet so I just thought it would be fun to make a bunch of blankets today A lot of fur. Lots of fur. this one done now this doesn't have a name on it so if it did have a name on it I always again I do everything the same way every time the name would be on this side which means I would put my tag on that side but there's no name so when there is no name I do it on the side closest to me which means I leave a little bit a little bit more of a lip on this side because if you sew with this, you know that it does shift. Um, and then when you put your tag in there, you have to leave like a bigger lip. I don't know how to explain it. I just have to show you guys. So if you know, you know. Sorry if you don't, if it's confusing. So let's go ahead and start pinning. So I like to do the middles 
Honestly, I do it different every single time. So if you've seen me do this, I probably do it different every time. It's just in that moment, in that day, what I feel like doing. Today, I guess I'm doing middles first and then whatever I decide to do. <laughs> I like to do middles and then middles of the middle. Some fabric, even though it's the same brand, act different. If you work with this, you know some of them are more furry, even though they're the same style. I mean, unless I'm the only one that that, that happens to. I don't know. I don't know why that's going off again. I do two right here because that is where my opening is going to be. And I just have always done that so that I know exactly where to start and stop. So I'll do a middle and then a middle of the middle and the middle of the middle. I don't do like every one inch or whatever. I just do that, what I just showed you. And I'm short, so I have to move it down. Middle. 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 corner corner middle middle talking to myself now technically I'm talking to myself this whole time but you guys can hear me I know I am chattery. I already had two cups of coffee today. That is why. Because I can actually taste it again. I couldn't taste it last week. Okay. So once that's done, I like to like bring it down. I like fold it. So what I do is I just grab it from the middle and I bring it down to like this, and then I just kind of like, boop, like a little zigzag. And then I take it over to my machine to sew. So let's come over here. And so with the blankets, I do um, the same exact, except for the needle position is a little different. So, I'm just going to move my needle position back all the way over. Not completely over, but I'm gonna do it to like an 8.0. I'm sorry, eight. Cause nine is my farthest over position and I keep mine at eight for the blankets and then four for the length and then two for tension. That's just how I've always done it and it's worked for me. So I'm gonna flip this around. I always like to start where my opening is going to be for my tag. That's just how I do it. So whether it's, depending on if there's a name on the blanket or not, will be the different position. Let me, before I start, make sure I'm gonna have enough bobbin, and I do. So I'm gonna start right here. And yes, I know you guys probably have heard this before. I do sew with my needles in place. Yeah, I know you're not supposed to. But I do. They're so fine, like nothing's ever happened. Watch because I'm on a live, something will happen.
So I always just line up the edge of the blanket with the edge of my presser foot. I know you probably can't see that. Let's see if I can get a better up view for you. But I just line this of the blanket up with the edge of this, if that makes sense. And then there's like, I'd say like a quarter of an inch. Let me turn it and then I can show you. So see the edge of the blanket is lined up with the edge of the presser foot. And then there's like a quarter of an inch right here from where I sew from the edge to where my stitches are. I do a few stitches and then I kind of like flatten it out. I pull from the back very gently just so it's nice and like straight. And I, I just kind of like hold the front edge and the back edge and make it nice and flat. That's how I get it to like sew nicely and not get bunchy. So see how it's like kind of bunched right there? So I just take it from my next like needle that I have or my pin and then I just kind of like stretch it to where it is enough but not too much if that makes sense. And then it just stitches out very nicely. So now it's bunched again right there, see? And then when I go to sew it, I just kinda flatten it out. And then it gets nice. And then on the end, the corners, I just kinda press down. And this one is being a little difficult, so sometimes if it does that, I'll just take that out. Whoops, and not knock you guys over. I just took that needle out right there, and I'll just use my finger as the needle. That way it doesn't get bunched up right there. And then you just keep cruising. And this is where it's about to stop. I have my next two needles right here, or pins, whatever you guys call them. I don't know, I always call them something different. Um, and then I usually count about 10 to 12 stitches and then I do my lock stitch. It's just a routine that I have. It looks like I'm gonna get my finger, but I swear it's like over the thing. And then I just cut off my extra little threads. And then we will cut it and then top stitch. So I do top stitch all of my blankets, if you're wondering. Come on. Sorry, this is hard one-handed. So happy for your success. You pay it forward to us. I can't wait to make blankets for our newborn additions. Yes, three new pieces. Aw, so happy for you. I too sew over the pins. I know, Katrina. It's a bad habit that you're probably not supposed to do, but I do it. It's amazing that your machine goes through blanket material without a walking foot. What type of machine? I love my machine, Joanne. So this is actually the first sewing machine slash embroidery machine, it's a um, combo one. It was when I first wanted to get into embroidery, sorry. Um, I didn't even really know about multi-needles and I wanted to start embroidery so I could personalize blankets. That's what I started out personalizing. And I found this machine, I actually got it at Costco. So this was my very first machine. I purchased it on costco.com and on their website and I, absolutely love this machine it has never knock on wood done me wrong um i only use it for my blankets or top stitching uh scrunchies headbands things of that sort um but i love it 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 is a it works like a breeze i know 
my settings and everything on it. So again, just like with some of my other machines, like my 1034D that I use for my nursing pads, I do have an industrial serger, but I still use my other one for certain items. Um, if this one ever broke, I would definitely repurchase it because I know the machine, I know how it works, it's fantastic. I love the locking stitch on it. I just love it. And it does work really, really, really good with my minky material. So I have, when I first got my industrial straight stitch and zigzag machine, the reliable, it is, a, it is a charm too, but I didn't want to get all the fur and fuzz in that machine. So I only use that machine for my clothing. This one I use for like all my blankets and stuff and I do clean it out, but quite frankly, it doesn't really get that dirty. So it's just an overall great machine. Janome is really good. It's the Janome Memory Craft 9850 if you're curious. Um, they do sell it on, I got mine at Costco, but they do sell it on Sewing Machines Plus. Um, I don't know if it's cheaper there or not. I am an affiliate for them, so I do have a link to um, the machines and stuff through them if you're interested or just want more information on it. I can always get more information to you on that. Um, or if you have any questions or want me to show you anything, I am more than happy to show you. But each of my machines have a specific duty. They are my employees because I don't have employees. So I use them. I don't like to change settings and stuff. Like I said, the only time I ever change my setting is if I'm doing a back to back for a blanket and I change the needle position. Other than that, my needle position is always the same. I usually use the same tension, same stitch length. I never change it. Always cut off your corners at a diagonal when you're doing these to get your sharpest, pointiest corners. And then right here is where I'm leaving my tag. So I always leave a lip right there. I can't reach that much farther, so I'm just gonna leave it. But I always leave a little lip right there so I can tuck it in. If you don't tuck it in, it will reopen. Trust me, I've done it. is always so satisfying because I hate mess and fur and it cleans it all up. So sorry if that's really loud because I have no idea on your end how loud it is. But it has to be done. One more time and then we'll be done.
So this part's also very satisfying. You just stick your finger through the hole right there, and then you just pull it straight out. And there's your blanket. I just take my little chopstick, push out the corners. Go to the next one. I'm sure you guys all know how to do this. I just don't know what to talk about right now. So I'm just telling you every little thing I'm doing. And like I said, I do top stitch all of my blankets. I know you don't have to. Some people do, some people don't. I just like the look of it because I think it looks just more polished. Um, so I do it. But I used to not in the very beginning and then I started to and I just really like it. Aw, thank you. <laughs> my sandals. Yeah, they got little like bows on them. I don't even know where I got them. I have a Janome cover stitch machine. It works great. I love Janome. I think it's awesome. Okay, we're gonna move you back over here. Hopefully I can get you in a good position. This tripod, I'm so sorry. I need a new one for in here. I got a new one for my other room and I just recently, this one just broke. Like the, I don't know what piece broke on here, but, but it broke. So it's really hard to like maneuver. Trying to get you guys into a good position to where you can see what I'm doing. So I basically find on here when I do this, I do it the same way. I like to find where my, so it's right here, my little, I think it's right here, my little opening that I have. Um, and I'll start on that top corner because that's where, that is where my tag is going to go on here. So I like to start on that side. And if you didn't know or see, this little black button on your machine right here is to level out your presser foot. So if I didn't have that down, see how this is like lifted up? I don't know if you can really see that, but see how it moves? If you push it down and push that button in, it'll level out your presser foot. So it will glide much smoother. I always take my little seam ripper and I just kind of guide it. I push it into the corner of the blanket right here, just because this material is kind of, you know, it's fluffy, so you don't want your needle to get stuck. So I just kind of guide it along, just a couple stitches up, and then I let go. Just enough to the corner to get out so that I can grab it with my hand behind. And then I like, I'm a perfectionist, you guys know that. So I like all of my fur to at least kind of like be semi, sticking out all the way around a little bit the same and I guide not the fur but the, the blanket so the print fabric I like to line the edge of that up with the edge of my presser foot just the same way I did it when I sewed the actual blanket together that way it's even all the way around and Okay, we're gonna stop right here really quick because I'm an idiot. And I forgot that I needed to put more bobbin in. I knew I was gonna have to do that, I just forgot. So, anyway, no worries. That happens, just back up a little bit and restart. You're totally fine. to go so just gonna start right here a little bit up from where I was and if you're if your edging is perfect then you will never be able to tell that I restarted right there I'll just have to go make sure I cut those extra strings off at the end Um, 
Um, also, another note, I use stretch needle or like, um, yeah, the, the needles for stretch fabric because Minky is stretch. Okay, we're coming up to our opening right here. You can see this is the opening. It starts right here. So I like to make sure all my fur is tucked in and I kind of pull it a little bit tight. Um, you can see it ends right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put my tag in and I like my tag to go on the very, very bottom part. I slide it all the way down as far as it can go and I just make sure my arm's in the way, I know, but I make sure I get, you can hear it going over the tag. Um, so that is one of the reasons why I have my needle where I have it is because when I top stitch my blanket, I learned that in order to catch my tag in there without it coming out, it had to, my tags are real small. So I had to get it close enough to the edge of the blanket to where it would catch the tag. So that is why I have it at 8.0 over there. I could put it at nine all the way over, but I like it at eight because it does give it a little bit of a design, I guess. If I had it at nine, it would be all the way on the edge and it just wouldn't look good, I don't think. do you guys want me to do? What do you want to see? I know I ask that a lot, but I really need inspiration because other than going, I feel like going live is just easy because I can just show you everything I'm doing. Um, videos are a little tougher for me because it takes more time and you have to see how it got stuck right there. So I just got to grab it and yeah, it's stuck. So because I was talking. So if this happens, I just kind of like maneuver it out. Take my scissors and cut that under there. You can't even see like where it got caught. Just There's just like a little tiny knot right there. So I'm gonna cut that knot off actually and just restart from that corner because I was not paying attention. Sometimes it'll get caught. That's why I use that little picker. There we go. I use, that's why I use this because if I don't use that, it will get caught like that. So I like to guide it. So if you guide it out of there, you'll be good to go. You just have to guide it. And these blankets aren't going to be perfect with the fur, like this is a little bit more hanging out on the edge, but you can't make them perfect because they're faux fur, so it's like they're crazy. Um, I try to just make them as, as aligned as I can, but nothing, they're not always ever gonna be perfect because the stretch is on one end. And the bottom parts are a little bit different because they fold up. I don't know, it's a lot to explain, but they're never gonna be absolutely perfect. So I just try my best. Cut 
those off, and then you have your blanket with your top stitch. My tag is stuck in there, it's not coming out. I don't know if you can see that. The sides always have the fur sticking out, if you notice, see that's one side. And that's the other side. So you can always see the fur on the sides from the top stitch, but the bottom, it depends. Sometimes they do like this one does, and this one doesn't as much. So there's a little bit on top, more on bottom. It just depends. Like every blanket's different. But this is the, this is the blanket. So pretty. Let's see, what did I miss? I did not know that, thanks for telling us that. Did not know what, Miranda? Are you talking to me? I personally prefer you live. I think we get a lot of useful information that we can't really get in a structured video. I agree, Karen. I feel like I tell you guys so much on lives, like I just don't stop talking. And if you guys have questions, you can ask. When I'm doing a video, most of my videos are just work with me anyway, so they're just like quick, like, fast motion ones that you guys can't really pick up information on. Um, but yeah. Oh, I just answered that question too. Yeah. So I mean, I prefer the lives better, but I know a lot of people are like, are you going to do a video on this or that? Like I can do whatever videos you want. I just prefer going live because I can work and it's like quicker for me, if that makes more sense, even though I'm not as productive on lives as I am just a regular work day. I'm more productive on a live than I am on a day that I do a video because when you record videos, I'm sure you guys record stuff too. Um, you have to stop, prepare the camera. Um, if you have to do retakes, if you messed up, it's just those sort of things that take time. So videos are kind of hard for me to do because it's time consuming. I have to do them on days that I'm like, like today I could have done a video because I'm caught up um, and I could have done a video on this, but I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go live. It's just, I, I think it's, I like it better. It's more entertaining for me. Um, so yeah, but it's all about you guys. It's not about what I like. Wait, where did that come from? I thought I took all those out. Okay, so this order is done. Let's go package this so that I can at least get this out the door today. So this order had this blanket and those two lovies that we made. So let's see what box I need to put them in. Let me see what my percentage is. Okay, we're good. I can take you over there for a little bit. We're gonna move you again. I'm very sorry about moving the camera around, but you guys all know that that's just how I do things. So let's go. My dog is, she lays everywhere. She'll lay in this bean bag, which is my son. He brought this in here yesterday. Um, let's get this set up so you can see. So I got the, I did splurge and get the canvas light thing right here. So I can actually film packaging videos a little bit better. Um, so it's probably in your guys' way. But I can turn it on so that you guys can have more light. It's kind of dark over here. So this thing you can turn on and make it different. Let's see, what do I like it on? I like it on that. It's on the highest. So I don't know if that made a difference to you guys, but it's a really cool light thing. Um, you can put your phone on it and everything to package it. It's kind of pricey, but I think it's worth it. Okay, so we're gonna package um, 
have to go get an envelope for this. So let's move this over here. But we can do this one first really quick. What are you doing? Hey, knock it off. Okay, close. Now, let me see if this is on yet or if it's gonna work. I'm gonna pr try to print this out really quick. Hopefully it works if it was prepared, right? Stop, stop. Print, sublimation settings, print. I don't know if it's gonna work, we'll see. Nope, okay, we'll do that later. So this is the shirt that we made earlier. I don't know if you can see that, super cute. So I'm just going to package this up. This is DTF, for those of you who weren't on the video earlier when I made it, that's a DTF print. Coming over here to grab all lives. <laughs> Tell us about the black button on the presser foot. Okay, so the black button on the presser foot is basically like a spring. So if you press down your presser foot, if you're using a thick fabric and you press down on your presser foot, you'll see your presser foot's like up if you have a thick fabric in there. If you press down on it, it'll level it out and then you click that black button and it should stick in place. And then when you let go, your presser foot will then be even with your fabric so you can glide over it. Um, a lot of people don't know about that black button, but that thing is so good with thicker fabrics. So try it, let me know how you like it. Um, it's kind of a secret, like people don't really know about it, but I've always used it and it does help with the bigger, like thicker fabrics. So see, I put these in all of my packaging. It is, I love a review because reviews are everything, I think. Um, and then I also always stamp, thank you, beingandbliss.com. This one's actually ordered from my website, so my invoices look a little bit different from my website versus Etsy, um, but even if it's an Etsy website, I always stamp it with my website so that they know I have a website instead of only Etsy. So there's that one. And you guys know I like to take my time on shipping because I like packaging. So this is um, Brianna. So thank you card, invoice, business card, and my care instructions are on the back of this. So I do throw in another care instruction card though. These are for my DTF prints. So these are for like shirts. This is a DTF shirt. So this is care instructions. I don't know if you can see it, but this is a really small card that I created for my DTF prints. Like if I'm physically sending out a shirt, this is how they'll wash it. Um, this is for embroidery mainly, but it's pretty much the same care instructions, but I do like to include this one as well. So these are my DTF ones. This is my care instruction card for my clothing. So it's a little bit different. Um, that's my clothing one. 
So I have different stuff for everything that I do. And I just have it labeled. I haven't gotten like a clear thing for this, so I just put it in this and I labeled it DTF. That way I know. Um, so yeah, so there's that. Getting on talking again. Put a sticker back here. that okay so let's do my blanket one now i'm out of wax seals i have a couple but i don't know if these ones are any i like them to look pretty this one's okay i guess so i pre-make my wax seals and i've been using i've been making so many blankets because it's blanket season um but i like to use these wax seals on my boxes so it's just an extra little touch you know so I just go like this, stick it right in the middle. This one's kind of wonky, but whatever, it works. And there you go. There's my box. Go lay down, Missy. I use this like honeycomb filler. It's just like this like filler stuff that I use. And usually I put some on the sides too, but because I have three blankets going in here, I'm not going to, I'm just going to Put it on the bottom like that. And then what I'm gonna do is put like this blanket like that. Now, whenever I mail out just single lovies, I'll put them in a plastic bag, kind of the way I just packaged up that shirt. And I'll put it in one of those pink, the pink um, envelope that I use, the bubble mailer, I'll use that. But when I'm doing like multiples of this, I'm going to just put them in here like this really nicely. Just like that. Let me refold this one because it's kind of crooked. They're very like floppy because they're so soft. But I'm gonna go like that. I always add, I print out my own, this is vellum paper, and I created it on Canva. I just had my logo, took out the background, made it black, and I just did the transparency to like 80% or 75%. And then I just scattered it and printed it out on my printer. And this is vellum paper. I always put it over the top of all of my stuff. Um, just to give it a little, again, another little touch. I'm going to include this. I'm going to write a thank you letter. I'm going to include my business card. I'm going to include a care instructions. And this is going to be the same for all of them. They're all the same material. So that's going to be that. Let me go grab their invoice. So she got the blush one, the gray one, and the gray and blush floral one. Okay. Her name is Margarita. Okay.
there's that, there's that, there's that, there's that, there's that. I know it's a lot of, a lot of stuff, but I feel like, I don't know, it's like kind of marketing, I guess. So I just put that in there. Make sure it's like in there. I get these boxes off of Amazon. I love them. I also get this really strong tape off of Amazon and I always just put it right in the middle to tack it down. It's not going anywhere. And then I use my, I don't know if you can see this. This is my label tape. And I just count how many logos. I do like eight. Four, five, six, seven-ish, seven, eight, depending. Um, and I just, because I just know how big the box is. And I cover up that, <laughs> I'm really particular. I cover up that other tape that I just put on there so that you can't see it. And then, so seven would have been good. I did a little bit too much. And then I do have to weigh this one because I can't remember how much these this weigh is with all those blankets. But I know already it's going to be priority mail, so I'm just going to put a priority mail sticker on here. One pound, 11 and a half. So let's go over here to my Etsy orders. And we're going to to print out her ticket real quick. So it's this one. Where's my blanket box? And it is a little bit heavier than my regular blanket box because I did add two other lovies in there. So my regular blanket box is one pound, four ounces. It's just set in there that I always use, but this one is one pound, 11 and a half adding all those, those two other ones. So I'm gonna do priority mail. And it is, a lot of people ask me if it's way more expensive to use boxes. It's actually not. Um, priority mail for this was only $8. So I like to use the boxes. I think they're super cute packaging. I'm all about packaging, you guys know that. Um, but it's not that much more expensive. Like it really isn't. I don't even really see a difference. Maybe because I've just always done it and I don't really care about it. I incorporate it into my pricing, so it doesn't make a big difference to me. And I just put that over that. And then I do, I'm very weird. I like to tape through the middle of my thing just so I know it doesn't come off in transaction or anything like that. So. We got those ones done. What else? I wanted to try to make this since we're just like caught up and I have like random stuff to do. Do you guys want me to try to make that sublimation cup for my daughter? I think that'll be fun. Uh, let's see. Of course, Miranda. Um, I don't know like what my computer is doing. Let me check here, hold on. know why it is not let's see usually it just comes up I don't know what to choose let me show you guys You guys can't see that way. Let's see. It's hard to do it. Hold on. Let me flip it around. <laughs> I don't want you guys to see certain things because I have like all my like, not you guys, but just random people who watch this. Um, I don't think you guys can see. I have like a lot of stickies down here that have my like information on it that 
you shouldn't show people. So not that I don't trust you guys, but you just never know who watches your videos. So anyway, I'm trying to update every, I don't know what it is about my Epson sublimation printer. I want to get a new one. I love the way it does. It's perfect. But if I don't use it every single day, I have to, for some reason, reinstall the software on my computer. And normally it's been easy. I just come in here and it's just right here and I just install it. But I don't know like why it's doing this this time. Like I have it under my bookmarks. It's right here. Epson download. Let me refresh this. It's telling me to pick an operating system. And you guys know I'm not technical at all. So I don't know. I know obviously it's a Mac, um, but like which one? So if I go up here, I went to about this Mac. Tell me if I'm doing anything wrong. And it says I have the Mac OS Ventura 13.5.2. But in here, would it be that one, the Mac OS 13X? Let's just try that. I don't really know. Let's just try that. We'll see. Let's see if that works. And then we can download. So this is what I have to do when it doesn't work. I have to download the thing. It'll pop up. Right here. So this is what we're going to print out. My daughter is like in love with the Scream movie and she wants me to make her and her best friend these cups um, for her friend and her to match. So this is how I do it. So it usually doesn't take that long. So hopefully this doesn't take very long. Um, but in the meantime, let me go get my iPad and answer if you guys have any questions for me or if you want to talk or anything like that, because I haven't seen your comments. My iPad has been over here. So let me just check on you guys. This is a random live, so. Okay, it's going pretty quick. And I already did a head clean on the printer because if I don't use it every day, then I will turn it on and do a head clean. And same thing with your DTF printer. You always want to do head cleans. Actually, with my DTF printer, I probably do about two, sometimes three, depending on if I didn't use it over the weekend or not, head cleanings. And I know it sounds like a lot, but honestly, you'll get so much better quality of a print after a good head clean. So it's kind of like a, I don't know, just something I always do. Okay. This is a really cute design. It just doesn't really go with my like niche. <laughs> I do want to open up a different Etsy shop that I can offer like different accessories and just different designs and stuff that have nothing to do with being in bliss. If that makes sense. I just want to be able to offer whatever, like if I thought this was cute and like, Oh, I'll just put that on there. So I am planning to do that. Just don't know when. <laughs> I want to do like bachelorette stuff, like pretty stuff, like bride stuff and parties and stuff like that. I want to be able to offer like accessories and have like a totally different like business with stuff like that. That's like fun to create. Obviously, I love sewing and all that. It's like my specialty, but I want to be able to open up and do other things too. 
So my new laser printer will be on that sort of side of stuff. But I'm going to be offering like, um, like the closet dividers for babies, like milestones, stuff like that. So it'll be able to do pretty much whatever with my new printer. I don't get it until December, so I'm super, super anxious to get it. Let me just show you while we're waiting. So I made this cup, this was an order, and sometimes this does happen, I don't know if you guys can see this. this these are my flower ones, and it looks really, really pretty. Um, it looks like super, super nice. And then you can see at the name Robin, see how it got shadowed right there? So that was a learning curve um, on my end. Everything else turned out great, but when I went to go take off the transfer, it slipped a little bit, and because it was still hot, it like shadowed it. So be careful with that if you do it. That I had to learn that process, um, and I didn't know. I'm like, what? Like, why? Let's see, confirm. Okay. Um, I didn't know why that had happened. And then I realized, oh, well, maybe I should wait for it to cool or um, just take it off really quick. Like, don't let it slip. And so anyway, the next time I let it cool before peeling it off and it was like perfect. And so now I just do that. And that's just my process now. Okay, we're almost there, I promise. Can you guys still hear me okay? I know I'm just like rambling. Wow, we've been on here for three hours. And it doesn't even seem that long. All right. Usually it's faster than this. I don't know, my computer is being weird today been doing this all morning so usually it's pretty quick where do you get where do you get the DTG shirts or are they just regular cotton shirts my DTF shirts you mean um so sounds like I'm losing my voice I did actually lose my voice all last week I didn't have one um so it's finally coming back but I am talking a lot so that could be why too would you like to register your Epson product now no thank you and then Epson Connect Solution, skip, close. Okay, should be good. So now I'm gonna go up here and I'm just going to, I already have sublimation um, settings, so I've saved those. I'm gonna open up this queue and close that out because it wasn't working. So sublimation, we're gonna print, okay. So, print, 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 please. There we go. Okay, it's working. But I'm printing it on a regular sheet of paper because I just bought this design, and this is how I test it. So, it says it's a 16-ounce cup wrap. So, I'm printing it on just regular paper just to see if the sizing is correct. And if it isn't, then we can go into Canva, and I'll show you how I resize it. Um, but it should be okay. But also, I like to test it out to make sure my ink is good and there's no, like, missing segments. Yeah, I lost my voice, Miranda, for literally, like, five days. It was insane. Like, I couldn't, I literally could not talk. And, yeah, it was bad. I don't know. Some people think it's a waste, but I think it actually saves me from more mistakes if you actually do like a test print and a head clean and all that good stuff. It takes more time, but it's worth it. So anyway, it's printing right now. I don't know if you can hear it or not. Um, Terry, back to your question. I actually have so many shirts for embroidery um, it depends on the style of shirt they want. So sometimes I'll use a full-on cotton shirt that I get from AJ Blanks. I have all of her blanks. Um, so I'll either use that. That's what I used on that other design because she wanted a ruffle on the bottom and the sleeves. So it depends on the style of shirt. If she just wanted a puff shirt, just regular, I'll use a 
AJ Blank's sublimation shirt because you can still use sublimation shirt for DTF. It doesn't make a difference. It just means that it's a sublimation shirt, so you can use it for sublimation. So soft. Everybody loves those shirts because they are so, so incredibly soft. Um, so most of the time, I try to use those for DTF prints. Um, but they're basically the same price, so it doesn't really matter. Other shirts that I use are um, ones that I get from like Blank Apparel, Jiffy Shirts, um, those sorts of places. And those ones are my boy shirts and I can show you which ones they are right here. They are just the next level. I don't know if you can see that. They're just the next level like Ash shirts and they're super soft. These ones are 50% polyester, 25% cotton, and 25% rayon. But they're so, so, so soft. My boys love them. So whenever I make them shirts, I try to make them on these for, like, boys. Those are my boy shirts. And then I have the sweaters for women that I'm going to be offering. So this is almost done printing. The color looks amazing. Neither could I, and I, in a way, it was kind of nice. I know, because you didn't have to talk to anybody. I'd be like, I can't talk. All right, this is almost done. I do use the A-sub paper that most people use. Um, it's just what I've always used from the beginning, and it works, I'm sure. I've wanted to try other brands, but this one just works for me, and it works, so why would I try other stuff. I don't know. I'm a creature of habit. You guys know that. So here's the design. And it's obviously sublimation. You can see my ink like leaked right there. That's why I do a test print because it always does that on the first one. So this is just on regular paper, but I'm going to make sure it's going to fit on my cup the correct way. It actually looks like it's going to be perfect. So we're going to print it again on regular sub paper. Again, I have two printers connected, so I'm just going to use my sublimation printer and we're going to print. It's already set up, mirrored and everything, so we're good to go. I'm going to print two of these out because I'm going to make her and her friend one. I offer two kinds of cups. So I offer the straight cup, which I showed you. Let's see. I'm going to move you guys this way so I can show you guys. So this is the straight cup. Super pretty. It's very like elegant. Um, and then they come with these glass straws. And then I offer This one is the Libby, the Libby cup. So this one is a little bit shorter, a little bit wider. And then I offer, I got this cute little, I don't know if you guys can see it. It works perfect. So if you offer cups too, so cute. It's a pencil, it's an acrylic, like a pencil dispenser. And I keep my straws in there. And I just do it like really like, and then they dispense. So they stay nice and clean. And then I just package them. So these are the straws that go with this cup. And then these are the straws that go in my straight cups. That way, because they're different sizes, so I like to keep them separate. But they are glass, so you want to be careful. But this is so cute. I love it. And it just keeps it, like, clean. If I can get it back in there. And I got that on Amazon, like everything else. So these are what I'm going to be working with, but the design is going to, once I cut it, it's going to go right to the edge, edge to edge. So let's go ahead and turn on my, let's go backwards again. So this is my, let's set you up right here. This is my sublimation area that I do it on. 
so this is my press. My press specifically, um, this is my heat up cup, so it's like burnt, but I use this every time I turn it on. This is my heat up cup. With my specific press, I have to have a cup inside of there while it's heating up. I don't know why, I don't have answers. It just says, right here it says, whoops, no heating up without a mug. So I just stick this in here and turn it on. And I just make sure it's like good to go. It only takes a little bit. Um, I have these like silicone mats on here so I can just like set them down. I got this pinch perfect thing off of TikTok shop. I love it, it's awesome. Um, and then for like other cups, I use that like wooden one over there. Asub, I like it. Are you able to do custom designs? I'd like to have a shirt and a cup with my logo. Yes, I do custom designs. So on my website, there's, um, I don't know if I have a sublimation. Let me make a sublimation listing. But for now, you can just use the DTF listing if you want it like now. And you can just write in the notes when you check out that you want it to be sublimation unless you want it to be DTF. Just let me know um, and then I can just do it that way. But I didn't even think about sublimation. So um, yeah, but yes, I, can, I, do, I do a lot of custom stuff. Okay, so here is the print. So see how there's no mistakes on this one now? So that's why I do a test print. There's no ink running or anything like that. And it's going to be a lot brighter than this after I actually heat it up. So I use this little cutter right here. My area is a mess, so don't look at all my stuff. But I'm gonna let it like dry a little bit. I have a fan on, so it won't take very long. Um, but I like to cut the edges off. When I make my own templates in Canva, I actually do a dotted, like serrated, serrated line or whatever, what do they call it? Corrugated? I don't know. But I make a little template to where I can know like where to cut it. But with this design, it looks like I'm just going to cut it like right on the very edges. So we'll see, this is kind of, this is for my daughter, so I'm not really like too worried about it. I'm just gonna cut it like on the top right there and we'll see as we go. I'll leave, I'm gonna cut it right there. So this is just a practice one for my daughter. So when they don't have the template on there, I just kind of test it and see like how it's gonna be, how it's gonna go. I'm gonna set you guys like this way. Let me grab her cup. Everything's out of it, so. I just like to, sometimes I like lay it down and just like look inside of it to make sure I like it like right on that line. And it looks pretty good like that. So then I'll just grab it. It's a circle so you don't have to worry about it. And then the way that I use this is I just step it in here or set it in here and I kind of line up the edges on here to make sure they're nice and straight. So it's a little bit off. And it's a little bit too long. So it's really big right here. So this template is too big for this cut, but I, I don't know if you guys can see me. So this template, see how much bigger it is right here on this cup? So what I'm gonna end up doing is actually um, I'm gonna try this trick. I've actually never tried this trick before, but I've seen that if you put heat tape right here over it, it doesn't sublimate on that. Let me see if I do it right. If not, then whatever, it's for my daughter anyway. So let's try that. 
I'm gonna do that actually. So I think if you do it like this, it won't actually like heat on there. So let's, let's just try this. I don't really know. I don't really know. I need to go a little bit more. And I love this pink tape. It doesn't leave any, like, anything. It's still heating up anyway, so I have time to play around. All right, so to make it like super duper tight on here, I want it to be like, this right here is what is really worth getting because it makes your transfers super tight because it just like pushes it all the way in there. And I kind of sometimes have to like open it up a little bit and maneuver it in there. But see how much extra paper like came out of there just by pushing it in there. So you push it in there. And then it does like basically the hand for you. So you don't have like to maneuver it. I wanna push it up a little bit though. Because I want the head to be shown right there. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So this keeps it tight so that you can tape it like super tight, if that makes sense. And you guys, I don't do this often, so you guys are probably laughing at me right now trying to figure this out. But we're just gonna see how this works because I don't do this all the time. This isn't my specialty. Um, just something fun to do. So we're gonna see. Okay, so now that that's on like nice and tight, I have the head, you can see like the head is like off of the curve. That's what I wanted right there. And then the, the bottom of it is gonna go on the bottom. So we're gonna see how this sublimates. Um, it's probably a little bit too big, but we're gonna see. I don't usually do this, like for my name ones or the birth flower ones, I don't do this, but this one is kind of, this is a full wrap design right here. So I'm gonna, I'm doing this. Taping it on the top. So it's nice and tight. Probably doing this all wrong, but like I said, I don't really, I don't really care. This is just for fun. So I basically just taped like the top part down so it's nice and tight up there. Miranda, give me any tips. Doing the same thing to the bottom, just taping it down. I 
I no never have to do this for my other cups that I make. This is just a different full design, so. Yeah. I like to put one through the middle on all of mine though because it keeps it from coming off of the cup. It just keeps it nice and tight. So I think we're about there. I usually like to have it at like 375, 380, somewhere in there. So I'm going to get my glove because it's hot. Take this out and we're going to rotate this because it is a full design. Usually I only put it in there for 200 seconds and then I do like Depending on how big the flower is, I'll twist it a little bit, but this one is a full wrap. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna start right here where there's this opening and then when we flip it, we'll do it to the other way. So that's how we're gonna do it. And actually I need to adjust this. So I marked on here with marker where the bigger cups are because my smaller cups are super skinny. This is another order. Um, so it has to close all the way. So I didn't think about that, but we have to, when I have different, I wanna get another one so I don't have to adjust it, but you have to loosen it. And I marked it with Sharpie, so I don't have to like <laughs> find the size each time. But it is a lot of a, it is a bigger cup, so. We'll see if that works. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be fine. Okay. Stick it in like that. Perfect. Okay. So we're gonna let that sit. It's about 200 seconds that I do. Uh, the frosted glasses, you have to do longer than the clear glasses. I can't tell you why. Probably the coating on it, I don't really know. But you do have to do it for a little bit longer. You're doing exactly how I've seen other people do it. Wish I could help more. I don't have a press, wish I did. Looks fine to me though. We're gonna see. We're gonna see how it turns out. Um, there might be some shadowing on the bottom, I don't know. But while this is going, I'm gonna print the other one out, but I think I'm gonna size it a little bit smaller so I don't have to worry about the bottom end of it. So let's go over here, back to my computer. I'm gonna go like that so you guys can't see stuff. We're gonna go into my Canva. And I'm going to use this in a design. And see, this is how it came up because that's how she did it in the template, whoever designed it. So I'm gonna go in here and I am going to do um, a custom size. So I'm actually going to, she has it in pixels, which is a little difficult because I've never used pixels. I usually just do um, inches. So I'm going to actually change this to inches and this isn't gonna be how, okay, well, sh it, it converted it. So let me grab a cup and see if it's semi-correct. So I use this, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's this round thing and you just push it and it basically measures how big your cup is. So 9.1234567891011129.12 but hers was too big. So I don't know, I might leave that. And then we're going to measure the top part. I want it to be like right off of the curve and off of the curb. So this one is like, let's do like 4.75. And then this one was 
is 9.12. Resize existing design without creating a copy. Nope. Okay, we're gonna go flip that. And I just open it and rotate it. Woohoo, it looks so good. Hopefully it turns out. Okay, so now that that's resized to that, I'm just going to center it so this is the size of my cup. We're gonna see if I did this right. But what I wanna do is actually I go up here to elements and I go to line. And these are the lines that I've used right here. And I basically just extend it. Whoops. Why does it keep doing that? I can't see that line. I go up here. I'm gonna make it black so I or like gray so I can see it. Where did it go? So see how you can see it? extend it all the way over and then I'm going to move it to like the top of his head right there and then I'm just going to duplicate it and these are like the line I don't know I'm just like I have to have like a template <laughs> so I'm going to do that I'm actually gonna do it, I'm gonna move it up a little bit. I'm gonna put it on the edges because I wanna have room. And then I'm gonna duplicate it again and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. I'm just walking you guys through what I would normally do on a day-to-day -day basis. And yeah. over to the edge, duplicate, over to the other edge. That way when it prints, I'll have like those lines to cut it out because it's smaller than my eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, if that makes sense. So now I'm gonna go right here, download, transparent background. I'm going to then up, I like to up it to one and a half that way it's at least 3000 pixels that gives you a nice clear image and i'm going to download it and then now that that has the lines on it it's a little bit different i'm going to go that's done sublimation settings i got to put some paper in there let me grab this first So this should be done. We're gonna let it cool for a second. But let me just show you if you can see, look at how bright those colors are on the inside. I'll show you after it cools for a second. I wanna let it cool for a minute. Um, but let's get the other one in the printer while that's cooling a little. But that's just kind of how like I size it and stuff and make my little template and I'll show you when it prints out. Um, you'll be able to see like where to cut it, if that makes sense. 
Let's see here. Even if it does shadow, it will make it unique, so she'll be able to tell hers from her friends. <laughs> Thank you, Miranda. <laughs> I never thought I would even be interested in this process. However, you somehow make it interesting. <laughs> Thank you. I will, however, just continue to purchase my DTF labels from you. I love, love, love my labels. Aw, thank you so much, Karen. I love the DTF labels. I think they make it so unique and so different. They're t it's like tagless, so they don't bother the kids because my kids are like really weird about their tags. Um, so that's originally why I started doing it was because of that. So let's, let's go over here now. I'm gonna see how this turned out. I can go ahead and make you guys not so, not so close up. All right, it's not cool, but we're gonna, we're gonna take this off. So I wanna see the sizing, how it worked, and if I taped it correctly. Looks like it got it good. Like you can see on the top right there, like the head, it got good, like all of it. I think I'm more concerned about like this bottom part, but we'll see. Let's experiment. So first I think I will take this top piece off. I don't even know if you guys can see me. Hi. Good, how are you? A package. I like packages. I know, it does always make it smell funny. Here, you. Thank you. All right, here is the reveal. Let's see if it worked. I usually don't tape it this much, but because of this size or the style I had to. We're also going to test to see if when I laid this tape down, if it works. See how it sublimated on that tape right there? But it's supposed to keep it from shadowing over the cup. So let's see. Oh, I'm nervous. Oh my gosh, you guys, it turned out so good. Look. We're coming to the back where it overlapped and that tape, oh my gosh, you guys, it totally worked. So that's a secret. Put heat transfer tape or heat resistant tape over the overlapping part and you will not get, you will not get those like lines that you can see. It totally, totally worked. That is so freaking cute though. And look at those colors. So yes, it worked. Um, and then you can see right here on here. So where it would overlap, normally you would get that, you know, it wouldn't over overlap that much usually, but you'd be able to see that line, but it instead heated it onto the tape. So that's a good secret. Um, and actually that size works good with the way I taped it and stuff. So I think it looks good. And there's no shadowing. I'm happy. Yay. I've never tried that process before and it worked. So there you go. So now let's do the next one and see how my sizing worked on it. Let me see here. It's gonna be a just a tad bit smaller, but I don't think it's gonna make that much a difference. So let's, let's do it. Okay. So here's the next cup. So this is what I printed out and you can see those faint lines. So that's where I'm gonna go trim the paper and we're gonna see 
the difference. But when you do make those lines, I do have to forewarn you, make sure you cut them off all the way because it is sublimation ink, so it will sublimate on your design. Trust me, I've made the mistake of not making sure all the dotted lines were cut all the way off and it got on my design. So I had to remake the cup. I actually think I have the cup over there that I can show you where you can see a little bit of the lines. Let me see if I have it over here. No, it's not this one, but this one had the shadowing. I don't know where I put it. I must have got rid of it. But anyway, okay, so here's the new one. I cut all those lines off. Looks so cute. And okay, so this is how, let me put my stuff down so I can show you. Can you guys see it correctly? So I like to lay it down and I like to do where I want the top of it to be. I don't really necessarily care about the bottom of the cup. I kind of want it like over the edge, like where the lip is. So it's not like on the round part of these cups because that makes it a little bit difficult when it's like on the rounded part. So this one is way too small. So I don't know what I, maybe it's because hers was in pixels and mine's in inches. I don't know how to convert that. So this part was correct, but this part was not correct. So we got to redo that. Boo. Okay. Not going to work. The only way to make it seamless though is to resize it a little bit bigger. So the length is what we need to resize. So it was 9.12 and it is probably an inch too small. Hold on, I'm gonna resize this really quick. Sorry guys. Sometimes this happens and you just have to keep doing it. That's how you learn. So we're gonna do nine, eight, let's do 9.75, see if that works. Okay, it's a little bit bigger now and it should work better now. We'll see. See, I learned by myself too, guys. So it does take time and patience but it's worth it. I'm actually gonna delete that bottom one and leave the top one. Okay, download, transparent background, move it up to 1.5. Download. My stomach is growling. And we're going to print. 
make sure you always change it to your sublimation settings because sometimes I've forgotten to do that. So this kind of stuff is just like fun crafting for me um, just to get me out of my norm and do something different. So we're going to print that again. And we're going to see how that goes because this one was way too small. So, I mean, honestly, I could do it on here and it's totally fine. But you're going to have that big gap right there. And, I mean, you could, like, do a personalized name right there if you wanted to. I don't know if you can see that. But I, you could do, like, a name right here if you wanted. I mean, to personalize your own cup. Who knows? But she didn't want me to do that, so I'm just going to redo it. But let's just take a look at this again. Look at how pretty that is. Like, those colors look really nice. And there was no shadowing on the bottom where I taped it. So my settings for my printer, even on the top right there where it was like barely on the lip, it got really good too. So I do it for 200 seconds on each side. I flip it once. 200 seconds on both sides at 375 about. Every printer or every heat press is different though. So you have to kind of mess with your own settings, um, which obviously I've wasted a ton of cups. Here's a cup that is mine. I just haven't used it yet. It could have been brighter. I didn't leave it in as long, but look at how cute that is. So I have a ton of cup designs that I need to upload on my website. I just haven't, but this one is so super cute. All of my cups that I'll be listing will be offered in these ones or the straight cup style. So you can choose whichever one you like. Um, here is a, another one that I made a long time ago. Um, this is just a fourth or a lucky, what is it called? St. Patrick's Day one, I guess. So you can see right here where I didn't uh, leave it on long enough. But trial and error, trial and error goes along with every single thing you make. Here is a uh, UV DTF one that I tried. I purchased this from a company. I'm not going to throw names out or anything or tell you like who I bought it from. But um, super cute design. I bought a bunch of transfers and it just didn't work right. So it could be user error. I don't know. But I had bought in other ones before this one that worked out perfect. Loved the process. But then when I got these ones... It just didn't work on these cups. So you'll be able to see. I wanted to do it for Halloween. These are the UV DTF. But then when I got over here, it like, and I did the whole process the same. Nothing was changed. And it didn't stick down here. So I ended up having to like rip it off. And it got ruined. So I was like, I don't want to waste my cups if it's not going to turn out right. So these are just like sample ones now that I show people. And then, of course, I have my burnt cup that I have to use in here. So all of these stay up here. Um, I do prefer this pink tape because it doesn't leave residue. It's not sticky, and it doesn't leave um, marks or anything. I also use this same exact tape for taping down, like, designs for my shirts that need to be pressed, like if I need it to stay in place. Um, with sublimation or vinyl or DTF or anything like that. I use that tape because it does not make marks on my fabric. Okay, this is almost done printing. And let's try this again. So I just resized it a little bit. You can see, like, I took out this bottom line because it was right on the edge. So... Let's see how this works. Or it turns out. I don't want to touch the print yet too much because I just it just came out of the printer. I try not to put my fingerprints on it. So here's the new transfer Now we're going to try to do. Okay. 
Let's see if this works right. Did you guys hear my stomach? <laughs> okay, so that's better. It's not perfect, but you're not going to be able to tell because of the hearts. So, and it's just for my daughter's friend. So whatever, she can choose which one she gives her. So this makes it nice and tight. When you know it's tight, you should be able to pick it up. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you should be able to pick it up by your paper and it's not gonna go anywhere. If it's loose, you'll be able to feel it. So it's literally pretty close right there. So I'm just going to push it together as much as I can. get it as tight as I can. I usually don't tape this way either, but because this is a little bit too small, I'm gonna do it that way. And then I'm just gonna take this big long one and go down the center. But now on this one, I don't have to worry about the bottom parts because it's just on there tight like that. It's not overlapping. I am probably gonna do the top piece right here. Because it worked on the last one, so why not? Just rub it down because that tip on the head right there needs to be like sealed down. And then I'll just go, whoops. Right through the center just to keep it in intact. I like to make it nice and tight so it doesn't come out. But then I like to leave a little gap right here because that's where I know where my center point is. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in here. Uh, same 200 seconds. Let it go, flip it, another 200, and then bam, we'll be done. Did you make your son's Halloween teas yet? No, I haven't. Um, I mean, if you guys are up for it, we can go into the DTF room and I can show you how I print it out because he wanted a design, a DTF design of Halloween. He didn't tell me specifically which one, so I can choose one that is cute that I can print him and my other son out one. What time is it? One. I have an hour before I have to leave. So it's up to you guys. You let me know. This is kind of just a free for all live. Like I don't even know what's happening on this live. So <laughs> this is just a fun one. Just a fun whatever. I feel good because I'm feeling better and also I'm caught up on work. So I had today to kind of just mess around a little bit. I do have this custom, so we can either do that or we can do this custom onesie that I have. Um, it was a completely customized rainbow shirt. She doesn't need it until November 1st, so I ha don't have to do it, but if you guys wanna see how I embroider a custom one, we can, we can do that too. It doesn't really matter to me. If you haven't already, hit that like button. Let Thank you so much, Miranda. I love how supportive you are. Yes, the like buttons definitely help me out, especially since I haven't been on a lot lately. I'm trying to get back into the algorithm here. But let's go. So I also, we're going to Disneyland in two weeks. I'm taking, I go with my neighbor every year. We take the little kids. 
and I'm gonna be making us, we do the Halloween thing. So I got these orange bags, they're canvas bags for like trick or treating. And I need to make a Halloween design for the bag and I don't know which one to use. There's gonna be one's for Andrew, one's for Cam, so two boys, and then I have a girl one that I need to do. So I haven't picked out the designs yet, but they're definitely gonna be DTF because it's just easy print and press. Um, so I do need to do those too. I was planning on doing a video on just like this random stuff, like accessory stuff. Um, but yeah, I kind of need to plug my phone in again. Pick up this mess over here. It does take kind of a long time to wait for this. It's like 200 seconds doesn't sound long, but it is long. It's the same thing with curing. So I'm just gonna flip it around. It's the same thing with um, curing your DTF prints. You have to wait like, what do I have it set at? 275, 285 seconds. So while it's curing, I'm printing another one or I'm powdering another one or whatever. I just have like a process that I do um, to keep the flow going. So normally if I was doing a bunch of these cups, I would be printing out the other ones and then preparing them, taping them and stuff while it's going. But you guys know me, whenever I'm on a live, I get distracted and I don't just, I don't do my process. So I'm always off. I love watching your lives. I have learned so much from you and I, and so I have to somehow show you some appreciation. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Hello, Miss Crafty. Have you decided what bigger DTF machine you're gonna get? I haven't. I've been going back and forth on my decision. Um, I know the printer that I have. I know the software. I know how to use it and everything. So I am a creature of habit. I've always say that. So I'm really scared to like get something that I don't know again because I don't wanna to have to relearn it. So I'm trying to stick with the Prestige printer. Um, I know the inks, I know everything. And I know they all take, as long as you like know what you like. So like if I wanted to try a different ink out, I'd have to like empty out my machine, just like with sublimation. You have to empty out your ink, clean it out, do the whole thing. I don't really wanna do that. I'm perfectly happy with what I'm using, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, so long story short, I just don't know if I wanna change it or keep it the same, not as in the same exact printer, but the same brand, same software, all that stuff. So I'm leaning towards, they're coming out with an R2, it's on back order, or they're like making it, I don't know. Kind of nervous though, because obviously it's a brand new printer. Same thing with the one that I got, it hadn't been released yet, I was one of the first people to get it. So nobody knew anything about it. So every single thing that I've like, shown you guys or taught you guys on little snippets videos whatever I do uh, that's everything I've learned myself because there's not a lot of information out on this printer it's brand new it was brand new when I got it so nobody knew how to use it um, all the diff like defects or um, different things the printer had going on with it we had to figure out on our own it was very hard so it took me a really really long time to understand it and get to know it and now that I really know it I love it but you know, you have good days, you have bad days, just like with anything else. Same thing with embroidery machines. You have really good days where you can stitch a shirt out and it never breaks a thread, nothing ever happens, you have a perfect day. And then you go to use it the next day and you have thread breaks or this or that. Like every single machine is different every day. It's just like us as humans. We have good days, we have bad days. So that's how I think of it. You can't get mad at a machine if it's not working one day because you walk away, leave it alone, and then the next day, it's good to go again. So you just have to go with the flow and try to like think in that mindset that it's not always going to be perfect. So you just have to let it be. And that's just how I work. So looks like it turned out exactly the same. The colors are super vibrant in there. Again, I didn't, oh, that's hot. I didn't have to overlap that, but yeah, it's really hot. I gotta put that down. 
can't believe I just touched that. <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't burn my hand, but I was like, ooh, that's hot. Um, what was I going to say about that? The DTF machine. Um, I, okay, so no, don't get me wrong. I love, love, love my DTF printer. Absolutely love it. It's super easy, especially for like a desktop one. I can still get, like I did earlier on the live, I don't know if you saw, but I did a 2XL men's shirt. I was able to print out a large enough piece for that um, on my desktop printer, which is amazing because it's not like a big industrial DTF machine. It's just a desktop one. It doesn't print as fast as the industrial ones. It's not a double head or anything like that. But it gets the job done. It prints perfect prints 98% um, of the time. It's just all around a really good one for me. Like other people might have their opinions on it, but everyone has their own opinion on everything. So I did find out or figure out the other day a way around even going bigger if I needed to because mine only prints up to, technically it should print 13 inches wide, but... I can only get it up to 12.25 to 12 and a half without it doing a head strike. Um, again, the printers are new. They didn't really know like everything about them when they sold them, which was not, which is unfortunate, but we've gotten around everything. So that's why on my website, it says it can only print up to 12.25 by 17 and a half because my Film pages only go up to 19 inches, but if you think about it, when it's feeding out the end of the printer on the roll feed, um, or the roll feeders like scoot the paper out, you can't print all the way to the very end. So technically, I only can go up to 12 and a half inches long, and I don't like that. So I thought about it in a different way, and I was like, what can I do to make bigger prints or offer bigger prints. So I've decided, I, th I thought about it the other day and I'm like, this is perfect. So I'm gonna just explore and figure this out. A while ago, I ended up buying a roll of film instead of the sheets of film. So if you see me in my videos cutting out off of the roll, those are, main, those are meant for DTF printers with the roll feeder, but mine doesn't have that. So I thought outside the box and I'm like, I can get film so much cheaper and so much more quantity of the film if I bought the roll and just cut it to size, which will A, give me more film for the amount of money I'm spending on film because you can only get like a hundred pack of film sheets for what, like around a hundred dollars. And if I buy a huge roll of film, I don't even know how many feet are in that film, honestly. I can look on the computer, but I don't really feel like doing that. But it's a huge, huge roll of film and I can cut it to size each time and A, not waste the end of my film if I don't have a big enough print for that sheet or if I can't fit two or three prints on one sheet, I can just cut it to size. So that's what I've been doing. But also, if I want to fill up that whole 19 inch sheet, I still can't get around the width, but you can always cut your image and rotate it a different way so that you can do it in two parts because you can Based essentially like tape your image together on a giant blanket or shirt or whatever you're doing, you can cut your image in half and just press it on top of each other, making sure that there's that's seamless basically. Um, so you can get around that way. But then also I can cut my sheet instead of to 19 inches, I'll cut it to like 20 and a half inches. So I have that extra gap of film on the end for my printer to roll it through so that it can actually print up to 19 inches exactly. So there's ways around it. You just have to use your head and be smart and think about stuff outside of what you're doing. But let's reveal this, I'm excited. I like this like plastic razor because it helps grab the tape. It's still warm, but it's not like hot anymore to where I can't like touch it. I 
I don't like taping it sideways like this because you can't just rip it off. Um, but I had to because the paper was too short. Again, I didn't measure it completely right. I'm going to put this on so you guys can, it's kind of still warm. So they look the same. Their colors are really nice. Um, this one's a tad bit shorter, but you can't even tell. So they both turned out really good. Um, in the back over here is where you can't even tell, but right here is where the paper was a little bit too short, but you can't tell with those hearts. So I wasn't worried about it. You can't even tell. And then what was really surprising to me was this one where we overlapped the tape and the transfer paper a good inch like it was overlapped and using that heat transfer tape right there or heat resistant tape that trick you guys should write that down because i've never done that before i wanted to try it and it totally worked you can't see any lines on there at all so anyway my my daughter's going to be so happy she's been wanting this cup for like a week now so there's the cups the tops that go on them with the straw so super cute so i have so many of these cups that i'm going to be listing on my site if you're interested or know anyone such good like christmas presents stocking stuffers you name it um, any of you guys can make these super easy you just need the sublimation printer sublimation paper and the cups and a heat press so super fun um, i love it whoops i need to come plug my phone in really quick because it's going to die. So now you guys, what do you, what, what should we do now? You tell me because I have, I only have like 45 minutes. So we can chat for a minute um, or I can show you guys something. If you want to see something, let me know. I don't know how much time I have to do stuff see I'm in the same boat I had to send my printer back it was a hassle to empty the ink so we are waiting for another one now I definitely do not learn another software do not want to which one did you have we have the roll feeder it's so nice but the shaker in here drying dryer is big yeah so the whole unit like that is I didn't have I did not have enough room in here and this is before I decided to go into my casita so I didn't get the shaker all in one unit because I didn't have room so I just got the desktop and I'm actually really glad because I've heard a lot and you can tell me in your own opinion um, if it's worth it or not worth it. I don't know. I said earlier in the live, I don't have time to sit there and babysit it. So it's nice that I can print it, powder it and let it like cure whatever, like each one. I know it takes more time um, and the whole point of having like a whole unit in one is so that you don't have to do that. But a lot of people have been saying that you have to make sure you always have enough powder because if you forget to put more powder in, your images don't get powdered enough. Um, sometimes the roll feeder like gets off a little bit so then your images don't print right. Just stuff like that that goes along with one huge big unit. You have to like babysit it a little bit more and I didn't want to have to do that. So anyway, um, yeah. I love how you think outside the box. I always try to come up with different things because I don't know. You just have to. Where there's a will, there's a way. That is absolutely correct. Hi, thanks for being here. I've been on live all day, so I don't even know how many hours we've been on. It says four hours, but I never know if this is right or not. Today was just a completely raw, real, work with me in here live. So we made a couple blankets, that's about it. Other than that, I've been messing around. Um, so here is a, I got this out. I printed it. Did I print it? Yes, I did print it. See, good for me. Sometimes I do something smart. This is a custom order. And whenever I get a custom order and I design it in my software, I like to print it out. So I've had this design similar, but she wanted it a little bit different. So I had to get it like semi redigitized and then redesign it. So she liked this font. She liked my rainbow, but my original rainbow had a applique like in the middle of the rainbow. It's on my site if you wanna check it out. Um, but she wanted the one a little bit smaller. So she picked out like three different designs 
that she liked. So she said, I like the rainbow of this one. I like the number of this one and the font of this one. So we kind of combined them and put them all together. And then she wanted these colors. So obviously you guys know when you design on your computer, the colors aren't the same as your thread colors. So I always have to tell my customers, this is what it's gonna look like, but the colors are gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna try to match them up exactly. And then I just print out my color steps on the back. So I don't always do this, only with custom designs. That way I don't have to hoop it, put it on my machine and be like, oh my gosh, I don't know the colors, I don't know the steps. So because I changed it, I print it out. So that's that shirt. So we can start that one if you guys want to, or we can do something else. Because of your room temperature, I don't think it will be able to get the shaker dryer unit. We'll love to hear whether it feels Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have the room in here for that. That's why I had to move my printer stuff out. Quite frankly, I told my husband that I have I I always have a lot of orders going out and I don't have my shipping area that I used to have because I put my printer over there. So I told him I would love to have just a printing room that I can just do all my printing in because the powder and everything, like I don't, I was constantly cleaning because I didn't want the powder anywhere. Um, it was hard to regulate the humidity levels in here for the DTF because this is such a big area and it's an RV garage, so the ceilings are super tall. So nonetheless, we moved my printer out into another room and now I have my old shipping station back on that big black table back there. So now I can lay my orders out and do them one at a time as I need to, which is really nice. But next week is fall break for the kids. My husband's gonna help me organize a little bit better because all of the stuff that you see over there, like with those that all that fabric and everything, I need to put it away, I need to get it organized because I'm like all over the place and I just need to organize. It's only worth it if you have a lot of orders. I haven't had any issues with it. The dryer has a sensor, so it's release powder as needed. We never had it with empty. Yeah, that's funny, because I also heard that too, because that's what I thought, that when you have the shaker unit, it will tell you when it needs something, like a robot. <laughs> but I guess everyone is, every, every unit is probably different. I don't know. Can you do the rainbow tea? Okay, we can do the rainbow tea or at least get it started. So let's make sure, I'm gonna do it on this machine because I think I have all of the um, colors on there, but let's check. So I think we're gonna use my faf, faf, however you call it. I don't really know how to say it. So this is the onesie I'm going to be using on it. And she wants the, I know these colors by, just because I use them all the time. So she wants it in this like pink color right here. She wants the mauve and she wants a mustard yellow and then black. So I need to find a pretty like mustardy yellow. I think these are pretty. But I always like to make sure I have the right, right right one I have stuff everywhere you guys that one's too yellow okay that one's also whoops I just dropped that, that one's also too yellow If you guys are interested, I know I mentioned it last live, I am doing a Sewing Machines Plus live on the day after thing, or the Cyber Monday, I think it is. So after Thanksgiving. And then I'm also doing um, December 11th through the 15th, I think, for Christmas. And of course he wants me to do it on the SWF. So I'll be doing lives on the SWF. Uh, 
Okay. I'm pretty sure I want to use this one. Let me just see. Yeah, I don't really have too many mustardy yellows. So I think we're going to go with this mustard yellow. It looks kind of orangey on here, but it's more of what she likes. So it's like a mustard yellow color. Turn that on. There's that. Which one is this? Sylvia. Let's see if I have it in here. Oops. There we go. And we're using a onesie, so I'm going to be using my smaller hoop. So I have to change my hoop size in here. And I'm going to change it to, whoops. I changed it to 88% because it's a smaller one. And I don't normally use this machine for my baby shirts, but I already have the colors on here, so I'm just going to use it and hope that everything is good. I'm going to set my colors. So that one is number three. And this is a full just fill stitch. So I don't have to do anything to it. It's just going to stitch. And then the one, number one, and then we're going to put the yellow on number two. And then we're going to do three. And then that is the black. Okay. So there's that. Let's hoop this. My tripod is broken. Sorry, guys. It's like all crooked. There we go. Here. Let me put this on the machine before I forget and we start stitching because I am tend to do that. <laughs> Some of you guys have been here all day with me. That's crazy. Thank you guys. I don't even know how long this microphone is going to work. So hopefully it doesn't cut out anytime soon because we've been on forever. I don't know how long it lasts. So you got to tell me if it stops like working. If your orders are random, they go with the manual shake and dry to start off. I have watched a lot of videos with YouTubers going through the process. I can tell that they didn't do the homework of full training. Then I hear about them complaining about it. Great printer. Yeah, totally true. Like that's why I didn't upload or do any videos on my printer until I actually like, and I've had it for a while now and I finally, finally feel like really confident with it. But again, I don't do stuff unless I feel like super confident with it yeah they don't make the prestige anymore it's um they're doing like it's like an I think it's the r2 is what I'm looking at um it's a double head printer it's supposed to be like the same software and all that I don't know 
Good to see you live. I'm going to really miss you being live. I've learned so much from you. I'm just jumping in. Hi, Cynthia. Well, we're making this onesie right now. Thanks for joining. We've been on all day, so if you have nothing else to do, you can go watch the replay. It's kind of a different live. I just made a couple blankets and we've just been doing whatever. So nothing in particular, just I did some sublimation. I made some cups for my daughter. Um, just had fun today because I didn't, I'm caught up for once and I just wanted to do stuff that I don't usually get to do. So that's what we're doing. So this is a baby onesie. So I like to use my smaller hoop for my onesies. Um, I do, I don't have my big scissors over here, but I do like to trim off these corners right here because they get in my way. We are just making a onesie. So I like to line the bottom piece up in the center with the center of this. I'm sure you guys all do this. I just like to explain what I'm doing. And then I always push it down and pull it from the bottom. I don't like to pull it from like this like all around I just pull it from the bottom just to get all that loose stuff especially if I'm doing a fill stitch I just make like to make it a little bit tight a little bit tighter there okay I always make blankets on this machine, so it's set to do a blanket on my frame. So I just have to move this. And I have it marked. I mark everything with like Sharpies so I don't have to like measure it every time. So this is the one thing I, I love this machine. The one thing I dislike about it is the frame because you have to make it super tight. It's kind of flimsy um, and you have to like move it each time. With the SWF, the frame is so solid and you don't have to ever adjust it. Every, every um, hoop that you get to go with the SWF, sizes are perfect. You don't have to move anything. But with this one, you have to adjust it. But again, Every product you get is going to have different stuff to go with it. So not a big deal. It's just an extra step. Okay, I'm going to trace this out really quick. Looks good. Okay, so we're... Make sure I took that off. You always wanna make sure you take that off and we're good to go. So let's just start. I can move you guys over here so you can see it.
if you want. How am I going to do that? Give me one second. I'm going to have to... Take you guys over here. You'll be able to see it more in a minute. Now that's stitching. Um, let's chat. I have about a good 30 minutes left on here. So Elizabeth and Cynthia, to answer your question, I just um, have been, we made some blankets earlier. We cut out some blankets. We sewed them. I did some DTF shirts, showed the process of that. I did a live tour of my new DTF room. We came in and messed around with some sublimation cups. Um, I made my daughter and her friend a coffee cup with the like scream face on it because she's really into that. So just been kind of a whatever live, like just having fun, doing random stuff. So that's what we've been doing today. Is that really, really loud with this mic I'm using? I'm sitting behind it. Elizabeth or Liz, whatever you go by, um, it's a long live. I've been on live since about nine, I would say. I got in here and the first thing I did was go live. So we've been going all day. So it's gonna be a really, really long one to watch. You might have to do it in parts. But it's been fun. I haven't done a live like this in, I don't, like two years. It's been a long time, so I just wanted to mess around with everyone and just try different things. Not necessarily stuff I do on a day-to-day -day basis, but just have fun. So now we're making a custom order. That color is so pretty. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's a very light, very light baby pink color. And she chose that font and everything. This is a custom rainbow design for her one-year-old. So I always love doing custom orders just because it's different from the day-to-day -day grind with the same designs all the time. I'm actually in Phoenix for a wedding from San Antonio. Oh, the weather is so nice right now. So enjoy it while you can. I wanted to sit out on my patio and do listings today because um, I have so many Christmas listings to put up that I'm excited about. But instead I decided to go live with you guys and I had more fun doing that, so. I have this embroidery machine set at 800 for the speed. Um, and obviously it adjusts it as it needs but it can go up to a thousand stitches per minute. I don't use it to its full potential because I know it's just like I say all the time, it's like a car. You don't want to, just because your car can go 120 miles an hour, you don't want to go 120 miles an hour. So I go 800 and if I'm doing blankets, sometimes I'll do like, I'll go between, I don't know, sometimes I'll go down to 650. It just depends on the stitch and what I'm using it for. Um, but with just regular shirts, I do like 800. And you can see it's stitching totally fine. Hasn't had any breaks yet or anything. So if it starts breaking, I need to turn the thing down. So that's just how I go off of it. Same thing with my SWF. I keep that at about 800 as well. Um, and that one can go up high too. But I never use it all the way up there because every single time I've tried to see, um, honestly, the stitch out, 
isn't as good because it's trying to go so fast and you get more thread, thread breaks because it is going so fast. So I feel like 800 is my magical number and it just lets me kind of breeze through the project and I don't have to babysit it and it doesn't break threads very often. So just things that I've learned over the years of using the machines and stuff. And you can always hear it and tell when something's going to happen anyway. I just know, and they both make different sounds. So like when I use this one, I always know when there's gonna be a thread break. On the other one, same thing. This machine yells at you though. So if there is a thread break or something's happening with the bobbin or anything, it'll literally like scream at you. So the SWF doesn't do that. It just stops. And then all of a sudden like, I'll turn around and I'm like, wait, it's not going anymore. It must've had a thread break or something. So it doesn't yell at you like the other one. You have to just pay attention. So pretty. That's a little better to see. So the colors are super pretty. She chose this like mauve color. I use this mauve color in all of my rainbow designs. And I have one boy rainbow design that's using like blue and yellows. It's super pretty. It's like a dark blue or like a teal blue, a baby blue, and then the mustard yellow. So I do make boy rainbow shirts more often than you would think. Um, so if somebody has a rainbow baby and it's a boy, I have that option. Um, but this color palette is a big hit for the people who like the lighter, more pastel -y colors. It has a mauve, a baby pink, black for the dots, and then the mustard yellow. I threw that in there just for like a splash of color. So pretty. Wish I could afford a machine like that, but I don't have the funds or the room right now. They are pricey. Um, there's no way around that. <laughs> they are very pricey, but everything is. Even my little desktop ETF printer is pricey. Like you just have to, it's not, I always tell people like it doesn't, even with me, like it didn't come overnight. You just have a dream, have a goal, and you'll get there, I promise. Just don't give up. Keep going, keep pushing. Um, this laser that I got, I have wanted for years and years, and I finally got it. So I'm super excited about it, but it didn't come overnight. It takes time. So just keep dreaming, and dreams come true, I promise. I started off in my old house in our bedroom nook area where we had our coffee chairs to drink coffee in the morning. And I took those out, put a little desk. I made a little L desk in there and I had a sewing machine and a serger. I actually just started out with a regular sewing machine that I got at Walmart. And that's how I made my baby stockings and my little footies that I made my boys or Cameron at the time because he was my first boy. And that's what I did. And then I eventually, we actually moved here and I had a dream that this would be my craft room and it ended up being my business. So things just evolve and things happen. And eventually we moved here and then it was Christmas time. And I remember my husband's parents asking me if there was anything specific that I would want for Christmas. 
and I had really wanted a serger because it would make my items look more professional. So they ended up giving me a Amazon gift card that allowed me to actually purchase a serger and like half of a cover stitch. So I ended up buying the other half of the cover stitch um, with my own money. But that's when I got the Ruther Lock 103040 cover or serger and then the matching cover stitch. So I got those two machines and that is actually when my business kind of started taking off because I was able to make more clothing items and have them look a little bit more professional, have that cover stitch hemming on it. I was allowed to offer, able to offer that. Um, and then it just kind of grew from there. Once it got super busy, I needed a different machine, which is basically when I started going live with you guys a couple years ago. And I ended up getting my industrial serger and then my industrial cover stitch and then my embroidery machines, like everything just kind of added up. And so each thing that I've added, I've just created new items with for my business so that I was able to like pay it off. So just keep your vision, keep your dreams, keep going. Don't ever say you can't do it because if you have that mindset, you won't be able to get there. Have a positive mindset of I'm going places, I'm going to do this. I might not be there yet, but I will get there. I did, I got, so I was on live, I think last week, and I announced that I was supposed to keep it a secret, but I'm a horrible secret keeper. And hopefully you guys can hear me because it's probably loud back here. Um, I got a laser engraver printer. It is the Eon Mira 9, so it is a big beast. It's going in my printing room where I have my DTF printer in there. Um, so I'll be able to make custom stuff. I'll be able to do a laser. I'll be able to engrave all the things. So I'm super excited about that. I want to be able to offer like engraved tumblers, um, kids cups. I want to do milestones for babies. I want to do um, acrylic templates because I want to be able to make my own templates now just stuff like that and things that are incorporated into my niche, but also be able to expand it too. So I'm super, super excited about that. I think the work area in that printer is like 37 inches uh, long by I think 28 inches wide. I could be wrong, but somewhere in that area. It's a really big work build. So I'm super, super excited. It's, um, I've, already, I've already bought it. It's just, not in yet I don't get it until like the end of November the beginning of December so kind of nervous for that delivery because it's a huge crate and I don't know how we're gonna lift it into the room because it is such a big piece of work so I don't even know if it's gonna fit in there we're gonna have to see and figure it out I've saved for two to three years for a multi-needle now saving for a DTF printer yes I know embroidery multi needles are expensive. I think my SWF is a little more expensive than my FAF, um, but again, I got more a couple more needles. Um, they are totally worth it, though. Like I love embroidery. I'm actually about to make a whole new line of designs for embroidery. I haven't done that in a long time, so I need to freshen up my embroidery listings so that's going to be fun and the dtf machines are pretty pricey too i mean any equipment that you get that's good equipment is super expensive it, you can't get away from it i will at some point even my husband wants me to get one and he wants a laser machine too i am so excited for the laser i'm I'm nervous to learn it for sure. It's going to take me a while to learn it because I've never touched one of those things, but I never touched an embroidery machine, never touched a DTF machine. It's all a learning curve. Which industrial serger do you have? I have the Juki MO 6800 series. It's the 6814S. I love it. I love it. I love it. If I had to get another one, I'd get the same one. Let's see. 
Does the sewing company have a discount under your name? I want your Juki Serger. Um, I have a code I can send you. Can you email me? And I will email you the link to my serger. I think I have it listed in the description. Listen to me, guys. My voice is going. Um, but it's been so long. I know that they change up the links. So let me get you a link for that. I haven't been live in so long. I haven't updated my descriptions. So if you can email me, I will email you back a link to my serger. Because I, I have a special link for you. I did the same thing, started on my home serger, then home Juki, and finally my Juki industrial sewing machine, which I love. Yes, it's so like, what's the right word? Gratifying? I don't know. It's so, um, it's just such a good accomplishment, good feeling to get there. And once you get there, you work on your next accomplishment and your next goal. And to get there and then your next one, it's just, it's never ending with when you're in this kind of crafting world, there's so many different things to offer and to get. It's just so fun. <laughs> Thank you. I know I can't wait because I have so many patterns that need acrylics and I can't, my acrylic company is no longer in service. So that was one of the reasons that made me decide to get it was because I don't have anyone to get them from anymore. And I hate using paper or the marine vinyl. I don't like it. I'm just used to the acrylics. And they make me feel more professional, quite frankly. Um, so now I can make them myself. And I'm gonna test out different thicknesses of acrylics and see what I like better. Cause I mean, I like the one I have, but I might be a little too thick for my liking. So we're gonna see, I'm gonna mess around with it. So this big rainbow on the top is always the one that takes a really long time. It just keeps going and going and going, but it's super thick. After that, it goes faster, but it looks a little bit wavy and that's just because it's a super thick filled satin stitch. After I put the tender touch, I don't even use tender touch. I don't know why I said that. After I put my cloud cover on the backing and I press it, it's nice and flat and it looks really nice. Um, you guys know if you embroider, it doesn't always look good until it's finished. But the colors are so pretty. I'm actually super amazed at my microphone system I have going on today. It's lasted all day. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> Watch I jinx it and then it turns off. So what have you guys been doing today while you've been on live with me? Anything? Gratifying, that's the right word. I knew nothing about machine embroidery before getting my first brother PE 800 and then my industrial you know, just three years ago. Yeah, I would say I've had my embroidery machines for, let me think here. We moved in here. My first embroidery machine was my combo, the Janome Memory Craft, because I didn't know I wanted to get into it. I just wanted to try it out. And then literally, I would say, like not even being sarcastic, I ordered the machine I'm working on right now, the FAF 10 needle. I ordered that about a month after I got my memory craft combo machine because I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. I have to offer these. And then I started getting orders and I couldn't keep up with it on that little machine. So I was like, I need a multi-needle. And that was when I got the FAF. Um, and I got that probably, let me think here. I've been in this house. We just hit our six year mark. I didn't start my, like, like professionally really start going with my business until we were here for about a year. So I would say I've had this machine for a good four years maybe. And then I got the SWF and then I got the other SWF. So yeah, I've had my SWFs for about three years. 
Hopefully I'm doing the math right. Maybe not even that long. I don't know. Mint only started in Bray three years ago. I bought my milk meal in April. Just love it. Yeah, I time goes so fast, but I honestly don't even remember the exact timeline of everything. My last sewing machine purchase was my Juki cover stitch, which I really, really love, but I also almost want to buy the same exact cover stitch, but the flatbed instead of the cylinder. Because I want to be able to offer like customized binding and be able to do it on my cover stitch. But with the cylinder cover stitch, you have to have like a certain piece for it as far as I know, or as far as I've researched. And I have the cylinder one, so I don't know if I can do that or not. I haven't even tried, so don't mark my word for that. But I know with the flatbed one, there are different options that are different accessory pieces that you can get. I know you can get accessories for each one, but I think binding is easier on a flatbed than a cylinder, if that makes sense. Speaking of um, sewing machines plus, I just got a message from my customer service representative. Her name is Laura. So if you guys ever call in and you have a question or anything, you can ask to speak to Laura. She's my representative. Um, and she will like any credit for if you purchase anything off of them. Um, another thing is I'm ordering some mighty hoops. I order all of my parts and accessories through Sewing Machines Plus because I am an affiliate for them. And if I ever like want to show you guys something or tell you about something, that's pretty much usually where I order anything supplies wise. Um, all of my threads and stuff like that come from All Stitch. I have certain vendors that I use, um, but my cones that I use for my machines, my sewing machines, like my serger and my cover stitch and stuff, all of those threads come from Sewing Machines Plus. And I use the Alpha Sew or the Maxi Lock. So both of those are really good. Um, and what else? I. Oh, so she just messaged me. I asked her about some Mighty Hoops because I've been getting a lot of requests for uh, sweater sleeves or like left chest logos, like stuff like that. And I don't have the Mighty Hoop to do embroidery on long sleeves. So I'm going to be ordering that from her. So she's just getting back to me on that. I know the SWF, you can't get every hoop in it. So she was checking on it to see if I can actually get that hoop for my SWF. If not, I'll just get it for the FAF that we're using right now, but I would really like to get one for my SWF. I want to make clothes for my grand girl. I have a sewing machine, but to make clothes look finished would be better to get cover stitch or a serger. Uh, what kind of clothes are you gonna be making? So anything with a hem, like a shirt hem, or a skirt hem, or a sleeve hem, like that, you would need a cover stitch for to make it look more professional. You don't have to have that. You can use a double needle. Um, you can always use some uh, like wash away tape, like hem tape, and then use a double needle to hem it on the bottom. So you can always get away with doing that. Serger for sure. I would always recommend a serger to start with first because that is going to make your garments look professional. You'll have the inside seams are serged so they look really nice and clean. So I would definitely start with a serger and then whenever your funds are accommodating, go with a cover stitch, but you can always use a regular sewing machine to make a hem. You have the sleeve embroidery hoops and you're loving them. What machine do you have, Naomi? Little dresses and rompers. I would definitely just start with a serger, get that going. 
Um, with the rompers, I don't even use a cover stitch for my rompers. I do top stitch it, which only requires a regular sewing machine. Um, and then to sew all the garment pieces together, you want to use a, a serger to make it look more professional. Dresses, you would have to hem the bottom and potentially the sleeves. But again, you can always use a standard sewing machine to do that with a double needle, or you can even use a single needle and then just sew double lines. You have the Melco. I've wanted to get the Melco, um, but I never did. I'm still thinking about getting one. What size is your box? What box? What box are you talking about? Sorry, my voice is definitely going. I'm gonna get a drink of water really quick. I am going to have to hop off this live pretty soon because I have to go pick my kids up from school. So probably in like 10 minutes. But I will post a picture of this onesie when it's finished on um, just my, well, I'll post it on everything. But on the YouTube, I can post it on my YouTube channel as well. So you guys can see the finished product. I mean, you guys have been sitting here watching it stitch out, so you should be able to see the finished product. Okay. What do we got here? Serger it is. Yes, I always recommend starting with a serger. That's where I started. I mean, I got them both together, but it was a gift. If I wouldn't have got that gift card, I would have started with a serger. Um, cover stitch is always awesome, but you can always do it with your regular sewing machine too. I did exactly what you just read. I remember sewing machine first, serger, then cover stitch. I used twin needle on sewing machine until I bought the cover stitch. Same. I either use the double stitch or I would stitch one line and then um, move my seam allowance over and stitch another line. Because I wasn't a fan of double needle. I don't know. I just didn't really care for it. So I would always just do one line and then another line. And it always turned out, I think, better for me doing it that way. But everyone has their own way of doing it, so whatever works for you, just stick with it. Um, these rainbow designs do take quite a while. Um, they take about 45 minutes to stitch out because they are completely all fill stitch. So it takes a while. They are beautiful. They're beautiful, beautiful, but they do take a while. The only good thing is it's not applique, so I don't have to do anything to it. and. This machine is really good at just keeping on track and going. So I never really have any issues with it. I can literally, when I'm about to leave to go get my kids from school, because I have to leave in like 10 minutes, um, I'll leave it going. And then when I get back, it'll be done. So it's super nice to, that's what I, I don't do a lot of fill stitch because sometimes they're too bulky and I don't know, I just don't really care for them. But this specific rainbow one, is perfectly fine with fill stitch. There are some certain designs that are good for fill stitch. You just have to make sure you have a good digitizer. So I use Sebastian Molina for all of my digitizing needs. I message him. I've been messaging him for three, four years now. I don't use him often, but whenever I do, he always come forward, comes forward. I've had him do business shirts, not only for me, but for um like dennis i do a lot behind the scenes that you guys never see but i do a lot of customized business shirts 
for companies. I do their logos embroidered on polo shirts. I do a lot of golf shirts. I do a lot of different things. And a lot of people will come to me with their photo or their logo and it needs to be digitized. And so I go straight to him and he always gets it to me in a reasonable time. Sometimes it's pricey, sometimes it's not, but I always make the customer pay for the digitized work because that's not my job. Either that or I'll just add it into their price. So just depends on who I'm working with and what's going on. But he is amazing. Um, you can message him on Facebook. He's always there to answer questions and do what you need. You do? Yes, he is so good. I've never had an issue with any design that he's done for me. And even if it's a hat, he knows it's a hat because those need to be digitized different. He always knows exactly how to do it and I've never had one mess up. So I highly, 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 highly recommend him if you need something specifically digitized. All right, so it's moving along now. My alarm is going off. I have like five minutes on here. And then I will take a picture of the final product and I will post it on YouTube on my channel. So you guys can see it. I'll put it on Instagram as well, on my stories. Um, this one is so cute. I love this design. But you can't get the full effect until it's completed because you guys know if you embroider, it always looks so much more polished after you press it and fold it up. Do you guys have any last minute questions before I hop off? It was so fun just being able to do whatever today. I haven't done this in forever and it was kind of like a brush, a, a breath of fresh air. Just doing crafting. It was a craft, crafting day. Thank you so much, Miranda. I'm so glad to be back and I appreciate each one of you guys that has been on. Some of you guys have been on from the very beginning of today and I appreciate you guys so much. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up on your way out. Those really do help me and it'll help me get back out there in the algorithm because I have been absent for so long. But I appreciate each one of you guys so much and I will be back on soon. So I'm trying to make this a weekly thing. I haven't set a day and a time yet to come live like I used to do a set time and day. I'd like to get back to that point at some time, but right now I'm still just trying to get back into the swing of things. You guys know, having four kids, sports, all of it, work, business, it's crazy. But eventually I will have a day and time again. Um, so I'm going to be more on here. I'm going to plan on doing live once a week at least. So. Sometimes I'll plan it, sometimes I'll just hop on. So if I see you, great. If not, you can always watch the relive or the, like the replay. But it was really good being on here with you guys today and I will see you guys in my next live. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and look for my picture later because I'll post this after it's finished. Bye guys, have a wonderful, wonderful day.